Hello and welcome to the Stream of Chaos. My name is Dave and I will be your Keeper of Arcane Law for this session of Call of Cthulhu. Uh, today we are continuing our playthrough of Hoist Regency Cthulhu with the scenario The Long Corridor. Uh, all the previous uh, sessions so far are all collected over on the Chaosium YouTube channel where you can also see the other games we have run. And if you are watching there, we do stream live each Friday on Twitch. I'm not going to specify the time at the moment because Daylight Savings is next week and... <laughs> You're damned if you do. Uh, I want to give a thank you to Roll20 and Sirenscape for being tools which are used to improve our games. And also, once more, shout out the ongoing Graveyards, which needs little shouting out, uh, stream which is happening each Thursday. <laughs> no, Friday. Uh, which one Wednesday. is it, Jim? Wednesday. 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 Yes, of course. It goes back. <laughs> thank you. Ah, flawless save. Thank you. Uh, each Wednesday on the KSM channel and all those, of course, we uh, collect it over on the YouTube. I think there are two more sessions to go so you still got a chance to catch up on the youtube and and, and tune in for the finale live uh where were some of the cast as well it's been a lot of fun um all right i think that's about it without further ado we'll return to the scenario at hand and the problems that are persisting uh we are also down alex uh this week as is evidenced by them not appearing on the screen um but they'll be back soon uh, so when we return, the Reverend uh, Jennings and Captain Stone are carting uh, this strange corpse that they've found uh, back towards the house. And Miss Georgiana has just been ejected from this dark, shadowy place, leaving her sister behind. Uh, we'll do a quick sprint around the table to reintroduce our investigators and then, uh, yeah, return to the scene. Let's begin with Art. Hello. Good morning, <laughs> slash not good morning for a bunch of people. Happy time zone. Um, please don't make me run. I'm already dying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I am playing uh, the good reverend. Where? Wow, I can't mm. speak funny. Reverend Samuel Jennings, also belovedly Sad Sam, um, who, as Dave pointed out, is accompanying um miss elizabeth northlake and mr george potterton uh, who are both a little worse worse for wear uh after encountering a strange eldritch uh cherubic mouth chest demon um i feel like that's okay, that's yeah. enough words that you used last session to count as a description mm -hmm, um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rib mouth chest rib cage Cherub demon? I don't know. I'm trying to find all the like <laughs> what sticks out in my head. Ribs. Those stick out. Yeah. Specifically <laughs> yeah, in this thing. Um but yes, uh, is is providing both physical support and as much as he's able to at this point, uh emotional slash spiritual support um for for the, the party. Uh and sort of like keeping an eye on our good captain as uh, he is aware that the captain has some trauma mm -hmm. uh but at least for the moment i mean i'm sure jackson can speak to the the mental state of the captain but um being in the midst of action seems to not be what causes concern uh so yeah it's no, mostly it's focused various... on on the two living human npcs yeah, and let the captain deal with the dead monster that he's carting. Yeah, speaking of, I'll let Jackson speak to that. Well, yeah, I'm Jackson, and I'm playing Captain John Stone, who has just killed the aforementioned weird little guy by skewering it upon a saber, I believe was the uh, the method used. And, yeah, feels good about it. Nothing quite like uh, getting the blood pumping and slaying enemies and... You know, saving the innocent. Uh, it was just what he needed to get out of that stuffy party. <laughs> so he's feeling uh, as good as he has for some time. Um, he's still very much aware that he shouldn't cart the body of this monstrous little creature into the party. Mm -hmm. So he's going to stop right beside the laundry, I believe, outside. That's right. But, you know, kind of just admiring his handiwork. Yeah, it's been pretty positive I'm so hoping, far. Hoping this will do something to turn around the massive reputation losses he's suffered at the party so far. That's right. It's funny. It's 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 such a fun setting because normally we get to like session, this is session five, 
we get to this point and everyone's like, oh, I'm really close to going indefinitely insane and, ooh, you know, wouldn't want a major wound. <laughs> this one also has the risk of censure, which Captain Stone is, like, one point off. So if your reputation falls even a little bit, they'll go, great, glad you saved my daughter. You do need to leave. You're just... The vibe is awful, and off you go. Is this a situation where if Captain Stone can, you know, deliver good news and gain three points of reputation, they can lose more again like can they it does it balance out we're, we're doing it as a net thing so if you over the course of this one night if you ever tick under your threshold so you can bump it back up right. um but if you then fall back if you gain three and then lose four you will be censored you know it's just that, that final bump all right um let's go across to jimbo because it would be unfair given that this is all happening over the course of a night usually like thresholds reset overnight but we've done five sessions in one night yeah. so you know <laughs> we're, we're t also you can't bump your sanity during a session but we can bump our reputations yeah so. that's true very true sure. yes anyway i am jim and i am playing uh georgiana wentworth uh and i am squeezing between dimensions being ejected out having just this abandoned my sister uh on the other side of the void and i really need to get back to her uh as quickly as possible i'm also on a player note uh, I, f I, f I found a potential sp spoiler. Not really, I don't think. But <laughs> I, I was thinking that, wow, my character is a nerd. They're a geek. They're well-read. They might know of, like, a mythological name for the gremlins that we've encountered yeah. a little bit. Uh, and uh, so I just, I, I kind of just did a, did a quick Google of like, I wonder if there's a mythological creature that is slightly similar. So yeah, I, 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 I found a Wikipedia article, something that immediately stopped reading. So I don't spoil it for All myself. Right, go on. But there is a Greek, uh, the Greek name is Akephalol. Uh, I think Akephaloi, sorry. Uh, it, Wikipedia page is headless men for those who are interested. And it has the best picture i think i've seen in a while so people should check that out because now that's stuck in my head for this horrible hideous beast Sim, uh, i'm gonna be honest when you were like oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna have a look at this to see if this exists anywhere and my brain immediately went it exists in bayonetta for sure <laughs> <laughs> that game is yeah, yeah. unhinged when it comes to angelic demons uh and is also just unhinged in general very true <laughs> it's a weird I, I... time Jackson's found the specific image I was thinking, was which is a little less, uh, little less uh, unhinged, ah. but still. <laughs> These are <laughs> also, there's another it. thing that's- Put it up on stream? Mm, I'm not gonna oh, be, not it's do... in the, I have no idea. I'm just not that's gonna. That's fair. I think I can, <laughs> no, I'm cool. not gonna. I, just, I said yeah. it and it was like, oh, hang on a second. Mm, no, never mind. ignore <laughs> me. <laughs> there's another thing that has, it's like Etons or, or something in fantasy oh. games, I think. Not Etons, but it's that sort of, I've seen this yeah. shape before yeah this is the kind of the vibe these things are bad and you should kill them mm. um well speaking of things that are bad that you kill um we're gonna return right back that's look into... weirdly cherubic yeah that's right it's a friend shaped monster no oh that wasn't <laughs> the take you had okay no cherubs are not friends they could be <laughs> not when you play bayonetta they're not <laughs> they're the worst what a Basically, bayonetta lore all right um let's uh let's let's do some do play some, some game do some do some nonsense um play some game so uh where we're picking back up reverend jennings uh is escorting young miss elizabeth well miss elizabeth northlake back through the gardens towards the house she has gripped your arm tightly and is no longer talking so much as looking around slightly nervously not fully jumping at shadows she doesn't seem to be in a state of terror but you can almost see the calculations running through her head as she begins to process what's happened and occasionally she looks back over her shoulder first she sees mr george potterton who is in a worse state sort of stumbling along looking at his shoes fading to like a you know parchment white um as he mumbles slightly under his breath clearly handling the whole thing even you know uh, far worse and then she sees behind him captain stone who has sort of in his arms the sort of almost like now with his back to like monkey like shape of the monstrosity that chased her and mr potterton into the morgue She's sort of looking at that. She reaffirms that it is real, that this has happened. And then she returns her her eyes to the house ahead where their parents are inside and you can hear the sounds of the party. 
Uh, behind, Mr. George Potterton. Then next coming is Captain Stone, who, as mentioned, has the monster secured underneath. You also have your rifle still loaded and unfired, slung across your back, and your saber cleaned of the blood uh, that once stained it and resheathed, but close to hand should you need it once more. As you're heading towards the uh, the laundry, you can see that the uh, doorway to the long corridor, which was broken when presumably this thing made its escape, has swung back ajar. A breeze coming from within, from that dark void, has pushed it open, and just as you're heading towards the laundry, you will both see... You don't see the emergence. It's almost as if there was nothing there at one point, and then a moment later when you blink or when you look again, she's just now stumbling down to the ground. But Miss Georgiana Wentworth, not fully sprawled, but stumbling against the wall and immediately whirling back around to that lot, like that painting at the center of this extended corridor and pushing her hands up against it and slamming on the edges, trying to get back through. There is no sign of the other Wentworth sister. Um, I pass it to the three of you. I, I should like to drop the corpse upon the ground and run into the corridor okay. to uh, ascertain Georgiana's state. The corpse lands, sort of sprawls out, and you don't fully shoulder, but you bustle past um, George Potterton and charge towards the corridor, your hand already instinctively landing at your saber. You'll be the first to arrive um, by Miss Wentworth. Uh, Reverend Jennings, what is your immediate instinct? Uh, immediate instinct... Oh no, this nice long lady that I've had some pleasant conversations with seems to be in some measure of distress. I should go and help. Ah, the captain is going. Oh no, there is other people I need to attend to. <laughs> so pause, pause for a moment. And... <laughs> uh, more just like there is an immediate internal desire to go and find out if Georgiana is okay. She seems like a nice young lady. Yeah. We've had some nice chats. She's pleasant. I say no All more true. on the matter. Because <laughs> the good the teeth, yeah. Um, but is also like, but I have two people who are young and yeah. in need of counsel and my job is to care for people. So the, what, what the heart is saying is important and what the head is saying are important are slightly different. And therefore he's like, ah, oh, but my duty is, and also the captain has now gone. So someone has to stay here. I will say, so, so I think there is like a desire to move, but then it's a... At a minimum, I need to take the two people with me, but I don't think that going into the corridor is a good idea. Well, Miss Elizabeth is going to, on seeing Miss Georgiana go past and Captain Stone, she lets out a small gasp as the captain rushes past, and then she uh, follows the thread, and she will begin to steer you, Reverend, if you don't do so instinctively, towards the corridor. She's not rushing, but she's heading that way. George is basically on an invisible leash and just sort of stumbling, following the footsteps and heads that way as well. He's pretty out of it. You will arrive at a walking pace. Captain Stone will rush straight in as Miss Georgiana. Um, yeah, what, what are you doing as well? I'll, I'll say, she'll say quickly that Elizabeth seems to have her head on her shoulders. Maybe she could genuinely steer George like just like towards the laundry for a second if we if we just need time. But at any rate... Uh, she could, I'll, but I'll, she's, I'll... she's also as curious as anyone else about what is happening. She sees you also emerge and sees the captain reacting startled. She will follow toward uh, the same thing. You can palm are her off any, and try and tell her. Are there any staff around? Like, I, I know that we're... the light Not out here and slim. not immediately. But you're not far from the staff corridor. You could try and offload. All of this no, is a beat away. You guys loading. are... Yeah, sorry. You are just Go. emerging from the gardens and the captain rushes off. Basically what I'm getting is, Reverend, yeah. you continue to... You, you begin to walk, steering towards the corridor with Elizabeth on your head. As Captain Stone, you sprint across and it'll be the two of you. Um, and it's the same thing you had when you saw Reverend Jennings some time ago. You rush headlong towards the corridor, like charging uh, with one hand on your saber. And as That's you do... the way whole, to rush. The whole house like gets larger in your vision as you approach it. But the corridor stays the same, having lengthened so far that it's almost as if it's not on the same plane as the rest of it. And as you charge through the uh, the doorway, you're almost a less fit man would be beginning to become winded as Georgiana has not even begun to approach oh, your like it within shouting range and you have to fully like bellow to be heard or to continue to race for what is now becoming like a short marathon uh, I'm running to into reach a in the center. Yeah. Yes, exactly that. Exactly. That. And then the, you know, the, uh, the house is a fixed image before it that's passed first. Yeah, exactly right. 
Um, Delightful. You're able to yell at one another, and the Reverend will approach soon after. But no, what I do is I get shunted out of this place. I, I think I'm out of breath. I've just been squeezed through dimensions, uh, and I could feel but didn't maybe want to admit for a second that my sister's on the other side as I get jettisoned out. I, I lose my shit for a split second or two, although there's no air in my lungs to really scream anymore. So I yeah. spin around and kind of pour at the wall for just a moment, then tick into, okay, fix the problem, start patting at it, spot the captain charging forward, uh, at which point I'll hurry for considerably less distance than him before I get winded. And as soon as he's in proper rear shot, start to point frantically at the wall there's a door. There's a door. She slipped inside. I, I, there's I, there's uh, beasts on the other side. Dozens of she's, them. She's still in there. Do, you need to get her out. I need to. Can, can I? The soldiers here. Can I spot the hole in the wall again? Yeah. Okay. So uh, turning back around and almost like when you like rent to see the captain stone, you like instinctively marked the point in the wall where you. Uh, had slipped through previously, keeping one hand on it and, you know, not wanting to go too far away for risk of losing it again. You can now attempt to make a spot hidden roll. You have found it before, so you can do so with a bonus dice and you need a hard success to find it. Uh, Captain Stone, if you wish, you can make the same attempt. You have not found it before, so yours will be a straight roll. No dice. No dice. Oh, some dice, but just not the kind we'd like. <laughs> All right. <Wrong> dice. <laughs> Here we go from me. First, with a bonus die. Nice. That, that does is, it. Yeah. yeah. Hard success. That's damn near an extreme. So with that, um, you sort of turn around and you've gotten the trick of it now. And the previous time when you sort of under anxiety, under pressure, were unable to find it, it took you some time to sort of like worm your way through. You've now got the trick and you spin your hand a little bit, catch the glint and then begin to slide along. For a moment, you think you can see a huge shadowy silhouette just on the other side, almost beginning to crouch down to pick at something beneath it. And then you're able to begin to wind your hand towards it. If you reach out and grab the captain, you can lead him on the same path through, which would take you back through to the other dimension. Um, what would you like to do? The Reverend is still uh, some ways away and only just now begin to approach them. I, I, I fix it. I, I imagine I've still got the ruby that I stole in one hand. I've kind of got it up to my eye. Uh, and I, there, there. I will grab the captain, uh, look off sideways for a second. If just you, if you look away, reverence. you will damn near lose this thing. You kind of just need to make a decision. Okay, I, 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 I'm going to go through and I will shout out to the Reverend uh, if I know he's approaching. Uh... Uh, we'll, we'll get get help. Get a, a doctor. Get we, we we'll need people. She might be injured. And, and the two I'll, of you. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're gonna do this. Uh, briefly. Um, so we're gonna focus on this for a moment. Um, I need both of you to make uh, dexterity rolls as you begin to slide through. Oh, and Captain shit. Stone, this is your first time nice journeying through this place. I'm gonna need a sanity roll. For well. Oh heck! All right. Uh, let's get started with that. Oh, okay. you're on the center. Really lucky with these dexterities because I do not naturally have good dexterity. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, can I get a, a, a dexterity roll from you, too, Captain? Okay. Mm. Uh, so you are going to take a uh, a D three of damage as Ooh. basically rearranging your physical form to slide between these different plates. Uh, by the time you merge on the other side, it will not have quite realigned in the same way. You find mm -hmm. bones sort of like squeeze a little bit more and the organs not quite where they used to be. You are whole, you are not bleeding in any way, but you feel squashed Squished. off and slightly twisted. That's right. Good. Um, so BG3. And also for failing the sanity roll, I'm going to ask you to take uh, a D4 of sanity loss. Excellent. As you realize that that thing you'd seen the sisters disappearing uh, between time and time again and then emerging onto the other side and seeing a number of these creatures. So the two of you come out through uh, the, um, the rip in space and you see three of these creatures, the same ones that you fought Captain Stone, all hunched around a figure fallen prone on the ground. You can only just make out the flash of yellow, the dress oh um, of uh, the uh, younger Miss Wentworth. Uh, what do the two of you immediately do? You have come out, they are facing away from you. They're not looking at you immediately, just instinct actions. 
I uh, scream it and rush to my sister. Okay. Oh, uh, I'd like to get a shot off first, at least. Okay. All right, go ahead and make... Uh, can I get... Uh, first of all, go ahead and give me a... Um, give me the firearms roll uh, to see if you can if you can strike a, a devastating blow. Just finish shutting up my sanity because it is getting a bit hairy here. Are we getting, are we getting indefinite? Now, range? I made this terrible mistake last time, but I believe one-fifth of 40 is eight. Yes. Excellent. I'm one point away. Are you one point away from Sensia and one nice. point away from Sanity Lars? Uh, exactly the same. I it's, started on 40 genuinely... Sanity and 40 Reputation, <laughs> and I've now got 33 Sanity and 33 Reputation. <laughs> and, it's a and, good combination. And started working on health now, so, you know. <laughs> That's right. Lost one point of health. Um, all right. Let's get this party started in her oh. rifle no All 14 right. points of luck is that worth it it's half my luck so it that is that the is needles, up to you my this, needle the, scare them off that well, it. the gun is going to go off and i'm going to get you to make an intimidate roll because they are going to begin to scatter from the gun so that's going to go off regardless this success is going to be actually connecting and no these things take four rounds of doing nothing else but reloading to to um fire again so whether you seven damage is good too uh uh it is they are but... also just for i know it was flavor but they are currently turned away they from are. these two they're they not are. actively like they don't see them that's well they might perceive them you're not they're not necessarily no bonus dice in this circumstance this is coming out of the thing and 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 firing immediately oh yeah. they are within point blank you know what? No. But give it between the sister on the ground, Miss Georgiana kind of charge This is going to be a straight. I'm not being particularly helpful. In, in, yeah. the, from a, like a, I'm, I'm panicked. I'm not a soldier. I'm just. I ah. oh, so the other one, Jackson. Luck, as I, I know, think... I know. Well, the other, I would yeah. say, no, although not tradition, traditionally, you're unable to push in combat. Given this has some sort of extraneous, I am willing. I think you could absolutely push this roll with the risk being damage to your musket it's uh or your rifle rather it's come through a strange dimension you've kind of as you emerge like as you're still pulling yourself through here you've like leveled it across your arm and just squeezing out you'll try and shoot i think ruining the gun is absolutely uh in the guy i think i should like to spend the 14 points of luck hit one of them if that would also grant me a bonus die on the intimidate that sounds reasonable done yeah i think that is i think that is absolutely reasonable all right good so, trade georgiana as you're charging out you feel the hand behind you release not noticing you sort of land on the ground and begin to scramble down these dark rocks towards your sister just below she's been carted off a ways or the rift that's opened has been moved further back you're not sure which and three of these monstrous creatures are hunched down around her looking as though they're beginning to sort of start like disemboweling or chewing through her stomach you can just make out the yellow dress as you can discover down your shoes sort of sliding in it not knowing quite what to do you, captain stone has emerged from the rift let go of your hand leveled the rifle along the crook of his arm and let loose a shot it roars past your ear clips one of them in the back and with seven damage it immediately coils over and begins to uh, roll down the hill having completely somersaulted over your sister and sort of like dark gray blood splattering the monochrome space with the exception of these tiny glittering jewels the other two immediately uh sort of like rear backwards you can see those small cherubic faces looking aghast you have no lights with you as the lantern was with the reverend jennings or with your sister uh below so it's only sort of the ambient light shifting through the portal and from these distant cold stars that still gives these things the illusion of true cherubic faces you don't have the brilliant light to show them for just those small intestinal demons um they look up and you can see horror in them as captain stone i'm gonna ask you to make a intimidate test with a bonus dice i uh, mean georgiana you are going to close the distance as this happens though what are you looking to do i depending on what the outcome of uh where they are positioned after this intimidate check it might change but my thoughts are if they are suddenly scattering to the wind i will fall upon my sister and try and drag her to safety if when i get there there are still big scary gremlins around uh, i've gone through my possessions on my character sheet i'm not a fighter as it's mentioned but i have a fan and i have to do something i think my ornamental fan which probably has like a lace thread that hangs it to my side or like yeah. a little pocket stayed in just comes to my hand and I try and bat someone with it not necessarily treating it as an improvised weapon I just I just put something, something in my hand it, and yeah. then whack somebody okay. 
A hundred percent. All right, in that case, then let's go to Captain Stone's roll and let's resolve that first. Uh, I think I'll just go for it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh. That's very good. I it's thought so too. The roar of the gunshot, as well as Miss Georgiana kind of just charging towards the three of them, one of them falling over backwards and rolling down towards the dark altar, startles the two of them, and their small faces twist in some visage of, of, of horror. Um, they recoil away and begin to, to skitter away from uh, the fallen uh, younger Wentworth long enough for Georgiana you to scoop her into your arms and begin to pull her back towards the rift. They are, you're not entirely sure if it's stunned or permanently terrified, but they rear away and seem to almost not almost, they seem to skitter towards the sides of the ball retreating. The one that fell is completely abandoned. You can see it beginning to like try and pull itself up. Uh, what you've dealt is a major wound uh, with its, you know, I'll, I'll resolve that. It's a lot of damage. So regardless, it's down, whether it's dead or not, I'll figure out behind the screen. Um, the other two seem to give no like instinct to retrieve it and they begin to move up around the side. Georgiana, you grab your sister and begin to pull her back towards the rift. And as you look up to it, see Captain Stone, a very striking figure standing before the rift. It's sort of silhouetting his space with where in here is only this cold, distant light. Behind him is this warm and healthy glow. Uh, the rift is very much open and easy to find. It is large and to a point where no trick is needed. You can simply walk forward and step through it. You hold your sister and haul herself up to it with Captain Stone covering your retreat. The two of you, if you wish, can return to the long corridor. I will, will take a split second just to check quickly on, on my sister to make sure that, you know, she's not obviously dead or something. I get the vibe she's hurt. Um, I have a little bit of first aid, but I, I, I don't, I, this is more of a kind of like, uh, what, what, just what's going on at this okay. point. You pull her up and towards Captain Stone. As you're doing, you can hear her like almost murmuring, gurgling faintly under her breath. She's not talking, but she does have some breath in her. That said, as you like, sort of like you hear her thing, you, that's good. Try and hoist her up to get a hand under to help her to move. As you do, you'll see that the front of her dress all down her stomach is stained brilliant crimson and your hands come away wet, red and sticky. Uh, she is in very bad condition, uh, but she is for now still breathing. Sounds to me uh, like blood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 we, we, we need to get her back into the corridor. Uh, help me with, um, I, I shrug off like a shawl or something that I have as part of my dress and I, I, I bind it around her stomach. Just, but more, it's not, it's more mostly a modesty thing, honestly. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, um, yeah done. And, and, and uh, I, I, I will start trying to position her up as best I can. Uh, uh, uh... Miss Georgiana, if you'd allow me to, to carry her, I, I, we might need you to find the way back. But she would be better served back at the house than in this place. Oh, yeah. oh you mean... Okay, you, if you can carry her. Yeah, yes, but uh, be, be careful. She, the, it, it's a strain to move through, and she might not be able to take it. I understand, but uh, I have carried, carried bodies out of battle before and had them come back on their feet. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, well, let's, let's get back through. You pass the body across, and Captain Stone, you sort of sling the rifle back over your shoulder and, and hoist her, keeping an eye on the horizon for these things just now vanishing over the edge of the bowl. This is the first time you've been in this strange, distant space, and with your mind reverting to its most comfortable place, that area of tactical intelligence, you see the portal opens now, no trick needed to find it, and you are aware that this is a breach. If you can see this, likely they can as well. And now you are very concerned that it is only a matter of time before these things, having just vanished over the bowl and already beginning to creep back up, very golem-esque, and peer over the sides, will rally their forces and attempt some kind of assault. The door mm. is open. And Georgiana can take your hand and lead the two of you back the way you came. Good. A, a final point, 
as before we step through, uh, because I, I don't, I don't think this is going to have any effect, but it feels like something that would happen. I, I scrape a, 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 a cross into the ground, the like sort of ashy ground with my shoe. Uh, but Just to mark the went. same point, yeah. Uh, no, I, I think it's a, like it's a crucifix. Like oh I'm hell yeah, that's like, even like, better. Yeah, I, 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 you possibly, I, I, had, you, you possibly have a small cross of your own if you want to deposit it. You can also just yeah, yeah, I understand. I, oh, yeah. I, I, I do. Yeah, perfect. All right. You mark a small cross, symbol of your god, and retreat from this godless place back into the long corridor. Uh, we're going to return to Reverend Jennings, as although this is brief, some small time has passed. Uh, Reverend Jennings escorting Elizabeth or being escorted by Elizabeth, it's a little unclear which, uh, you are walking towards the corridor when you see the captain racing forward. You see the exchange between the two, the concern in Miss Georgiana's eyes. You note the absent Miss Wentworth and draw the conclusion that she's missing. And then you see the two of them slip between the cracks in reality and into that, uh, that absent place. Miss Elizabeth also sees this. Miss Potter, Mr. Potterton is distracted. Elizabeth lets out a gasp as it happens, and you can hear her under her breath say something along the lines of, I knew there was something strange. Um, and she's heading towards that. What What are you doing? Ah, uh, look. At the point at which two people disappear into a space that isn't there, I am going to try and halt uh, Miss Northlake, or Miss Elizabeth, um, to uh, to make a suggestion that like whatever the hell is going on, this corridor is weird and spooky. We should go and alert the staff so that we can get your father. And I'm going to try and lead her in the direction of the kitchen uh, or the servants' corridors, uh, saying, "I understand your concern, mom. I really do. But this is more than just intrigue at this point. This this seems genuinely dangerous, and I, I don't think." It, it would be uh, against everything that I have been taught about society and about God to allow any one of your stature to be in any kind of danger, madam. I must insist we go to the kitchen, fetch the servants and fetch your father, please. Yes, 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 yes. Father might know what to do. Uh, it, it seems a shame to leave Captain Stone's trophy here after he went to such great pains to bring it. Um, uh, George, if you, uh, Mr. Potterton, if you'd um, find it in yourself to, to fetch it. Uh, George Potterton is unable to do so. Um, mm, and the body I, is still I laid would... sprawled in the white stone gravel. How far away from the house is it? Mm, midway between here and the few yards along like white gravel and then there's the gardens. It is kind of in the open at the moment. Um, I would... Madam, I, I think we best ask the servants to fetch it as a matter of urgency. The faster we get to the, the kitchens, the faster we can have this sorted. I, I do not believe... Uh, the good Mr. Potterton is in any fit state to take any kind of direction except follow. Well, um, yes, yes. Um, uh, we'll, I'm we'll... going to essentially, yeah. Yep, she, uh, she acquiesces and uh, turns, walking the two of you towards the laundry. As you do go, she's going to clench your arm and she is going to say, Reverence, I, what, what is happening? Madam, I don't know. However, we will find out together, and you are safe with me. And make sure of it. Can you make a reassure roll, please? <laughs> Can I? We'll find out. And I think actually genuinely, through the actions you've taken and everything, you can go ahead and take this with a bonus dice. And you are being reassuring unless this comes to a fumble. Um, this is for some extra benefit. Uh, 43 under 50. Okay. Success. She winds closer to your arm and does draw some significant comfort from your presence. You are her master. Uh, she does see you regularly, sees you as an authority figure, also a friend of your family. You've also evidently gone to great pains to save her from terrible danger. Uh, you can go ahead and immediately gain uh, a point of reputation, as this will kind of go further, and beyond that, gain some impression in Elizabeth's eye. Um, the two of you head towards the kitchens, uh, inside which uh, Miss Elizabeth quickly uh, uh, finds one of the 
uh, the staff members and will tell them to fetch her father. Uh, seeing the urgency in her eyes, they treat this with priority uh, and immediately head out into the party. And as soon as those doors open and you can hear from the other side the sort of striking of the band and music playing, it sort of like jars the whole thing. And for half a second, you remember the first time you found a long corridor and you went, this is strange, and then returned to the party and were able to kind of put it from your mind. And so for a second, you're like, there is a party. And you have this like, how do these two... How can there be a party happening and this horrible, strange, different world coexist? And your, your mind can't quite jam the two together until you're able to sort of mash them in and, and, and reconcile the two. I am going to have you make a sanity roll, and this is mostly for seeing Miss Georgiana and Captain Stone vanish between worlds, but also just for this whole incredible night. You reconcile it. I am nice. a man of God. <laughs> I am someone who takes things at like on faith. I have a lot of faith. And so the idea that something impossible could occur while horrible is still like, I truly believe that Jesus walked on water. Yeah. Come on now. Strange things like and and rose from the dead, and that was not bad. Yeah. That wasn't undead, that was fine. Um, so, like, I think in this case, it is very much a, like, this is strange and unbelievable, but God works in mysterious ways, and I just must have faith that this is a Anything. test. He, he, a test. Has, he, has sent, he has sent this to test us for whatever reason, and we will come at, like, we will either succeed at his test or fail it, but no matter what it is, it is his will that, that we are in this situation. Um, and I will act in accordance of, of all of my training and all of my belief in, in the, the goodness um, of the, the Lord our Father. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a religious person personally, so I'm <laughs> like, I don't know what words, mate. Hmm? Yeah, amen. God, you hit the, yeah. you hit, you hit the big ones. Um, yeah, yeah you, as, as you're standing there sort of internalizing a lot of this, yeah, you're able to find some, some safety I in your faith. I would uh, like to, it may be overstepping my bounds as a guest, but at this point I, I kind of feel that the urgency of the situation makes it somewhat appropriate. I am going to approach uh, one of the, like, some of the servants yeah. um, and say, like, impart to them, there is, for want of a better term, like, a an animal, a, a like, deformed animal corpse that is in the garden you need I, you need to fetch it and move it to the laundry out of sight of the guests it is quite disturbing we do not wish to upset anyone please this needs to be done quickly and also the master of the house may want to see this okay. um, and try and sort of impart to them the urgency of fetching and give them the general gist of where it is I try to do my best to prep them that it is like a weird deformed animal so they're not they're not going to have an immediate freak out on seeing it they're expecting like something bizarre but hopefully that they can they can go oh it's just a deformed animal not like oh this is an eldritch monstrosity because yeah. it being dead maybe mm. um i'm not gonna ask you to roll for this although directing another stuff might require it given you're here with elizabeth and given it's not an unreasonable request and you know blah, 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 it's, whole thing, it's you're less able to... that i'm saying you must it and more yeah. like your master may wish to see this and i do like i understand this may be yeah. of concern to the guests it's more providing them with like a, I think this is a very good idea if you were to do this but obviously you do not have to take orders from me but also you sort of kind best, of do it's, best you do it's, yeah That's it's right. the weird in between line of I am not your employer I am a guest and yeah. of a different yeah that's right and Elizabeth and also, can immediately lend something. yeah and Elizabeth can immediately lend your your voice um credibility uh beyond what it already has uh two of the staff members head out into the garden. They will cover the thing they find out there and draw it not into the kitchen, but yeah, in, into the laundry where it is deposited alongside, you know, dirtied sheets, silks from the, the outside, and, you know, the serviettes already cleaned from the uh, the dining room. Um, a few, uh, you will also hear um, Mr. Potterton, who's standing outside in the fresh air trying to sort of... Uh, when you can hear him say, ah, uh, Captain Stone's 
found another trophy. As uh, he looks down this long, perilous corridor, recoils and holds himself for a moment as uh, he spots Captain Stone emerging out the other side, cradling uh, the second Wentworth sister uh, and beginning to head towards uh, him. The four of you can... Uh, sorry, the three of you, along with the youngest Wentworth sister and Miss Elizabeth, unless she is uh, dismissed, can uh, reconvene in the kitchens... And I will tell you that at shortly after uh, Lord Northlake will reappear, you can see one of the staff members. One of the staff will tell you that he's been fetched and he'll be here in a moment. You have basically a beat to talk amongst yourselves, uh, and then uh, Sir James Northlake will make himself. Yeah. Just to complete the scene, we got, we got to come in with a large bench in the center of the room and sweep all of the canapes off it <laughs> and hoist, uh, and hoist the up. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, it's I a, mean, fetch the doctor immediately. Like that's that that is probably the point at which the reverend fully breaks and just turns to the servant. Probably whoever he recognizes from church refers to them by their first name and says, "Fetch the doctor." Yeah, a hundred percent. Young Martha Giddings, uh, recently <laughs> graduated from a scullery maid to one of the lower housemaids, uh, is recognized and seeing the. Uh, uh, it'll be it'll be a kind like it, it, it'll be direct, but it'll be like Martha, you're a you're you're a girl with a good head on your shoulders. Please go fetch the doctor immediately. We require his assistance. He goes yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, so and immediately vanishes out the thing, sprinting at first, and then as soon as she goes through the door, into a quick walk and <laughs> out and into the party, yeah, vanishing to find uh, the doctor. She will be invisible until she finds him, uh, and then returns swiftly. Uh, as soon as Emma is laid out on the table, you can see the severe state that she's in. Her entire face is com is white, the blood drained from it, and visibly pooling, already leaking past the uh, like knotted scarf that you've tied around her chest. Uh, you tentatively reach out to kind of unwind it or to repressure it, and she lets out a painful moan and sort of coils up around it as if in agonizing pain she is wholly unable to speak and on the verge of fainting death you are unsure do any of the three of you have some first aid skill it will be a moment at least before the doctor or wrong i reckon i should what's base 35 30. 30. 30. I, st I still think that even just between us we we try to do something it yeah. you know, so I'm, I'm very happy to lead a, a first aid role if people want to jump in at 30 as well for me. Kevin, so did you say you have 35? Yeah. Oh, oh geez. You will, have a, you will have a bonus. You will have a bonus dice. I would love a bonus die if that's Do okay. Not, don't fumble, please. Oh, no, they got no fumble now. Is that new? Is that I, new? I think that exclamation mark is new. Uh, you I thought it was <laughs> No, fumble, fumble as like a word is new. Yeah, we've, we've had fail, but fumble I think is new. I believe it is as well. Cool. Yes. They, I know they did some changes for um, Arkham, which got released recently. Oh. Some of the sons of people. Awesome. Thanks to the good folks at Roll20. No thanks to the good folks at Roll20. <laughs> I tell you what, you have stopped though. it being a fumble. Um, That's true. Captain Stone, you uh, head forward and uh, just sort of assess the situation with Miss uh, Georgiana uh, assisting you, um, Elizabeth and the Reverend standing nearby and, and watching as well. Um, you're not sensitive to, to blood or things like that. You've seen it in, in your time. This is beyond your ability. You are reminded of your allies that have caught a belly full of shrapnel, have devastating internal damage, and are pulling themselves around it in an attempt to relieve some pressure from the pain but unable to do so there is devastating internal injury here and it is realistically quite beyond the surgery of the time every fellow you've known to have this kind of injury has died reverend you in particular georgiana you're more focused on your sister see the captain begin to sort of you know as he sees this um, I immediately go and find uh, like we're in the kitchen I pour the man a glass of wine 
because that is <laughs> what they did at the time. They were like, oh, you're having shop? Alcohol. Um, so I'm going to find wine uh, and put a glass into his hand and say, drink, Captain, drink. Um, and I will probably, if Potterton is nearby or like if he can be drawn into the kitchen, I will do a very similar thing to Potterton as well. I will sit him down, I will give him a glass of wine and I will say, drink. Um, because and I will. Dulling, dulling some of like the shock. It's uh, also, I think a lot of the time, wine at these kind of events was warmed especially if it was in the colder months. Yeah. So it is something This is a, summer, this is is a some... summer thing, so it wouldn't, but, you know, the vibe. It, it, yeah, potentially. Um, I mean, I think, like, even... You want warm wine? You got warm I will drink yeah, what it's, is it's in usually, front it's, of me. It's often spiced, like, there'll be some kind of spiced punch something yeah. that is... Ooh, like um, a sangria. At minimum, it'll be room temperature, but, yeah, it, it's in a kitchen, so it'll be at least warm from the kitchen. We're in the kitchen. Um, There's, like, four bottles of gin scattered around. <laughs> the, the, the staff there is, is There is wine provided alcohol. for the two of them for the purposes of um, uh, something to drink, and also it does dull the shock, I, at least insofar as the wisdom of the time goes. I... So there's terrific rule for uh, being drunk to an attempt to... Uh, reduce sanity down and i think that applies here uh captain stone are you are you one to drink to excess uh not before but there's a first time for everything yeah do you want to go ahead and give me a constitution roll oh well and if you'd like and J- jackson I'm, sorry let me before you roll this i'm leaving this in, in your hands if you wish you can make that this is this will be the same rules as as basically drinking so it will reduce sanity or, or, or hold it indefinitely, but you'll need to make a constitution roll or have penalty die applied to your skills. It's only regular sex you need. I'm happy with that. And if you want to leave this in your character's hands, you can make a power roll first to see if you might be, you know, if you're able to restrain yourself or not. I'm all for it. I think it's a sensible decision. Let's go. I go will ahead. drink to excess because I've got a constitution of 80, so nothing bad can happen. Hey. Yeah. And there he is. All right. Uh, you drink a healthy amount of this. Elsewhere, uh, or seated, seated next to you, George Potterton is doing likewise, although handling it not quite as well. Uh, you do not have a penalty dice applied. However, any points, any single point reductions to your sanity, you will ignore. Um, although you will tally them all for future reducers. Uh, yeah, you have a, you have a, you know, a, a reasonable buzz and you're able to reassert yourself. Thank goodness. Um, you are, however, unable to help uh, Miss Emma Wentworth, who is coiled in agony. The doors burst open and they are not from the inside but the outside that uh, Lord Northlake appears with a small gathering of staff members, all um, uh, or several with armed with like birding shotguns that they had taken with them to go and search another section of the garden, having left when the two of you didn't immediately return uh, to uh, start their own party. They must have been searching a different area and not headed towards the morgue. They come inside and Lord North like immediately heads to Elizabeth and embraces her, holding her to her chest and beginning to speak quietly. The rest of the staff members uh, looking around uh, will see uh, the uh, the figure on the uh, table and another will come and you can immediately see that like under the stairs the whispers of the staff immediately begin to swing around as one of the ones that helped to return the body from outside into the laundry lets that be known and it begins to filter up the chain towards uh, the head butler uh, who you recognize sort of like an older man in a slightly you know a nice sort of like I want to say like a tux kind of a thing. I don't know if that's appropriate. But long tails, that sort of thing. Uh, who has one of the shotguns across his um, crack. He would be played by... It's a John Cleese sort of look. Uh, who hears this and immediately heads f- forward to speak with Lord North like once appropriate. Another door will open from inside the party and the doctor uh, will make his way inside. Um, Dr. Parsons, escorted by uh, the uh, younger... A staff member, and he will immediately begin to assess the situation of um, Miss Emma Wentworth. Uh, what other three? I, you know? Yeah. Can I uh, sort of a little bit before they arrive, maybe into as this happens? You have a half uh, a beat. You were looking at your system mostly, but yeah, go ahead. Completely understand. Uh, uh, 
I basically just want to do a little bit of uh, uh, situation management. Um, there is, I, I, the, reputation-wise, probably not good to have a bunch of people see Emma being wounded on a table. It's a kind of compromising. Also, uh, you know, if I couldn't help with medicine, my immediate instinct was, well, I'll I'll make her look very comfortable and deathly ill and like tuberculosis sick, which was very fashionable. I, I understand at the time. Can I genuinely try and like? protect her reputation here at this moment like she's oh. injured it's so terrible no one's allowed to see her in this state except for the doctor and like lord north I, like get anybody I think else i him. think that's such a great like i love that that's something that a character would be concerned about in this situation <laughs> is privacy and reputation and i think it's probably the doctor has to could someone could see her, her exactly skin, you know, yeah. and also and with her sort of like like coiled around her her chest or something yeah I, absolutely um i mean my instinct would be a disguise an art craft disguise role which i know is, is more in your sister's wheelhouse unfortunately than yours i think also miss well you are while you are concerned for this this is always what your sister was a little better at than you um i, I was what gonna, would what 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 role do you think would be most appropriate here disguise i'm not going to be able to really do what i was going to try for is something along the lines of etiquette genuinely yeah. like like what would the procedure be here um can i can i lean on uh like sort of the established social rules of the time to make sure that the only people around are like you know that's just, I, I i spring yeah. up and sort of say this is a this is a, a close family only or something sort of yeah yeah i mean you are you are clearing the kitchen out which is being used for a full party but yes go ahead and give me an etiquette roll uh reverend do you want to rent lend your voice to this yeah i also have persuade if you'd rather that uh no, no. Et et etiquette's etiquette's appropriate here this is this is understanding it and enforcing it uh go I ahead and i think in this if I may provide, like, how I would be of, of use yeah. here. It is less of a clear the kitchen and more a reminder to all of the staff that, like, um, that when someone is in distress, whoever that person may be, they have a right for that distress to be a private affair, as everyone is aware, family matters are private matters. So it is less that we have to clear the kitchen and more that like, they all just do that buffer of, we don't see this. Well, that's this exactly isn't a right. thing. That yeah. And there is a level of like, you would be concerned about the staff, but really they they would never, you wouldn't, they would never dream of yeah. you know, saying anything, but yes, this is impossible. Go ahead and make an etiquette roll, Miss Wentworth, with a, with a bonus advice. Thank you and very this is going to scale. Okay. Uh, okay, well, that becomes an extreme success. Okay. Um, very nice. Yeah, incredible. Uh, you can have, like, a curtain or, you know, like something like a, an improvised curtain drawn around her that the doctor will be able to operate in. That will probably make it... That could possibly even make it easier for him to do. So, basically, without distraction from the others. You also bring... You know, there will be no suffer to reputation here. It's not going to work itself into a bonus for reputation because I can't really justify that, and I don't think it's it's appropriate for it. But the you you handle the whole thing with dignity. The staff are completely on site, and people have only concern for your sister. There is not a thought of her compromised situation. If there's an if there's an angle that I can have, yeah, absolutely, please turn do. it into an advantage. Can we therefore be left alone as quickly as possible with? north lake and potentially have him in a position where he's more like he's appreciative of us of trying to like calm the scandal oh, so maybe we can yeah. a little one side yeah you're still keeping the whole thing down low um so the only the the present uh people are going to be the three of you miss emma laid out on the table and dr parsons working urgently to try and save her uh nearby is miss elizabeth northlake with her father Lord Northlake, currently embracing her, but soon to uh, uh, release and uh, talk about what happened. George Potterton, who is nearby, and you will quickly hear that uh, someone sends for his eldest sister, who is kind of there acting as not chaperone to him, for he is a man, uh, but there is the basically other significant Potterton who should come and help. Uh, and there are also the staff members of the most note being the head butler, Mr. Hillier, who is uh, kind of taking charge of all the staff and having, and you can hear him saying, fetch the key and lock the laundry door. Um, also, and he's, actually he'll probably say, and lock the door to the kitchen as well. Best not to have anyone stumbling in in search of a little snack. 
uh, and things are beginning to be secured down and you are all inside the room. Dr. Parsons is paying no mind to the conversation. He is wholly focused on this and this is where his attention is needed. Uh, what he is performing is basically modern surgery with, you know, uh, vintage appliances and, 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 and technique. Vintage. Vintage is not the word <laughs> I meant, but it was the one that came to mind. Yeah. Uh, what would the four of you like to do? Uh, I would like to just for flavor say that during this time probably while Miss Georgiana is, is trying to do everything the the reverend in sort of the background um, looks a lot more intense in his like expression with this situation the the like the fact that Miss Emma is is injured and hurt seems to have affected him in a way that is more than you would sort of imagine and he um part of part of the support is um he recites the uh Psalms 31 9 be merciful to me lord for I am in distress my eyes grow weak with sorrow my soul and body with grief and it does sound like this is something that he has recited many times he knows it very well um and is is then like next to Georgiana and it's almost like that is directed almost to her as well as to himself and to like the party at, at, at large um making no attempt to ask how she is but that is that like that is very much being directed you you would be able to very clearly read that that is being directed at Georgiana yeah. as a way of like creating support and calm and and yeah yeah oh yeah um so in, if you sorry. want oh sorry yeah no go ahead jim oh just, just i was i was, I was going to breach into the conversation with north north lake basically but I, I as a as a direction for it i think what would be uh I, I i assume that amongst the moments of the chaos we have sort of time to sort of as as just happens sort of step and get a quite whisper to each other just so we're all up to date on each other's yeah. information for for the purposes of of the chat and when you when you give that line to Georgiana uh, to start the conversation, I think I want to bring out that ruby I found. I'm thinking of just putting it down in front of North Lake and seeing what his reaction is, see how much he knows. I will say one quickly to think, Jim, you've mimed it as being quite la large. It's tiny. It's a yeah. it's a value, but it's like a thumb. You're not even a, not even a nail. Yeah. Just just to clarify, it's it's a it's a minor piece. It's yeah, not a fist sized. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I might do though is take it and and uh, I'm kind of assuming that you might lead the conversation with uh, Lord Northlake, uh, Reverend, since you've spoken to him before. I probably <laughs> after you finish the Bible quotation, <laughs> take like take your hand and put the ruby in it and like hold a little longer as like a thanks for reading, and then eyes dart to Northlake. Let's let's figure this out. Uh, yeah, when when uh, he turns his attention away from Elizabeth to the rest of us, I will give him the opportunity to start the conversation, for that is the polite thing to do, um, even if it's just a look of confusion. Um, yeah. But I will essentially start to converse with him when... Okay. He he will he will uh, hold Elizabeth back and say, thank God you're all right. Uh, turn and say, uh, whom, whom, whom can I thank for finding her? Um, the, the, the captain, um, was, and, and myself were able to locate Miss Elizabeth, Sir James, um, in, uh, it, it appears she and, and Mr. Potterton were, um, accosted by some kind, some manner of deformed beast, um, outside in the gardens. From what we can gather, so it, it, it does appear that this may have originated that this this beast may have come from the house sir and i'm going to like open my hand with that ruby in it uh not saying anything but just like allowing it to be allowing seen to be seen um uh just to sort of go i don't you are the higher society person if you tell me to shut up this conversation goes nowhere else but i'm really hoping that i'm really hoping it goes that. better um, Lord Northlake steps forward and uh, takes your hands, Captain, shakes it, yours as well, Reverend, and uh, is immensely grateful. He says, uh, Captain Stone, 
I'm thankful you could make it to our party, and I owe you here a debt. Saving my eldest, my only daughter's life is something I don't know if I can ever repay. Elizabeth is also basically reiterating everything you say and giving it more, yet more weight. Uh, he is taking this all at face value. And he shakes your Very hand good. and yours as well, Reverend. He says, you've shown brave bravery here that I would not ask of any guest. Truth told, I'm proud to call you my friends. Um, he steps back as well and seeing Miss Emma, well, he's already seen it previously, but turns his attention to her. You mentioned the house and the ruby and things, but his attention is first going to fall to the younger Wentworth sister and say, what happened to her? Was she the same beast that you fell? Did it find her first? There. Well, I'm afraid there are more where it came from. Um, and my lord, I appreciate your kind words. Uh, I think you would um, be able to begin repaying this debt you promised me. Would you allow you, were you to allow us to proceed in the manner we deem most appropriate to protect the house from the rest of the thing's brethren? You, you, you say something coming from inside the house. You, you say Quite. there's a, a, a the, monster uh, and that it's been... A several. Sir, in fact, many you, several from the corridor. Forgive me, sir. How much your family history is related to the old house? How? Well, I... I I know as much as there is to know about my family's history. Truth told, that since my... We've been here a long time, and there's a lot of it. I'm not sure I understand what you might be referring to, though. A tragic death every century? Exactly every century in the same month? It, 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 our, every family is plagued by unfortunate incidents. People die. It's, it's, it's devastating, but... I, I wasn't aware of any such rhythm. In, in, what are you saying? Are you well, saying this is planned? This is some divine incident? So I, I, I use the word divine, but it is planned. Maleficent might be better. So James, if I may speak plainly, um, do please the family tree in your family Bible and the note from the good Alastair Northlake. Ah. There does seem to be a pattern of of, of unfortunate uh, occurrences to the eldest child of a family line about once every hundred years. It seems to be that there is a chance that whatever is happening in the house right now, sir, is related to whatever it was that drove Sir, Al uh, Sir Alistair Northlake to distraction and his deeply unfortunate and untimely end. You can the pattern that has held for centuries were to continue to hold then a child of your house would perish tonight. And no, no child of my house will die tonight. And he holds Elizabeth closely. Oh. Um, when you mention, I was going to like, when you mention Alistair, you can see a, a, there is a air of, there's, there's a shame there. This is a little bit the family's dirty laundry being air. Um, Very specifically, and you can, I... you can also see a little bit of, there's the tiniest instinct for him to go, and that's enough of that bullshit. It's really yeah. just your current reputation that's letting this kind of conversation eke forward. He does not want to talk about Alistair. Also, very, very specifically, I in no way am intimating yeah. Alistair did anything other than, like, there was... The, oh, yeah, no, 100%. died, and then he passed it, like, being very careful in the language that I'm using to say, like, it appears that this all seems to be related. What your family business is, is yeah, essentially, your, your family business is, is certainly none of ours, but, but, so, your, if your daughter is indeed at risk, 
as you say, we want to assist and ensure that if that pattern is to reoccur, that we find some avenue to stop it. Well, it's it's not just that. It's not everyone's at risk. My sister is hurt, and there's more of those things, and they could be upon us, as Captain Stone has said. If you want proof, step outside and look in the corridor. It will tell more than we could with words. We need to... We, we, we could be besieged. This is a... I'd, rec I'd recommend fortifying the corridor as soon as possible to prepare for the eventuality that those things will come in, and I think we have very little time to waste. Oh, so that... when the house was renovated, did you remove locks from the corridor doors from the outside? The renovations were before my time. My, my, my great-grandfather did the last of them. My grandfather made some minor alterations, but nothing significant. I always found it curious that corridor remained at all. It seemed more sensible to convert it into extra space for the ballroom, but it's been there a long, long time. Listen, I'm... Show me the corridor. Show me this beast that I can understand this as best I can. I believe you. I trust you in this, and it is gravely unfortunate that any misfortune in my family should fall to the four of you. Miss Wentworth, I'm sorry your sister was swept up in any of this, and I will do what I can to set it right. You must believe me, I had no knowledge. I, do we I, believe it? I believe you. That, but we, we, I, I, we can fix this now if we act swiftly. Do you want to? Do you want to give me a psychology roll, Captain Stone? I would. Or I would else? like to. I would like to give a psychology Go roll ahead. for this. I, I have. I have. I'm trained in psychology as well. If you want to bonus stuff. Okay. Uh, well, uh, there's probably going to be independent roles, and I'm going to say this is very much going to scale. Lord Northlake okay. is a person who, like, peering too closely is a little dangerous. I believe him. Yeah, I actually I, I grew up knowing this man. You yeah, know, I, I have faith. <laughs> I have a regular success for the yeah. time being. Uh, Captain Stone. Oh, I don't care. Oh, I okay. Got, uh, I got a, I got, a, I got a house to save. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I got a psychology of fifteen. More. Miss Wentworth, you're as distracted by your sister as anything else, and genuinely, it's not even that you uh, you can draw whatever conclusion you wish. You you've struggled to read the man. He is a. You're kind of seeing a bit more vulnerability here, and it obviously probably makes you a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, Reverend Jennings, on face value, you 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 do trust him. You, you read the shame around Alistair, and he does seem to be earnest in this. This is not a man who makes promises or debts lightly, and you've only known him to fulfill them. That said, these are extraneous circumstances, and a man of his ability and class would be able to veil his true intentions should he need to. There may be more that lurks beneath the surface, but you're inclined to believe it for the time being, at least. Um, what follows is... He is go you are going to take him to see the extended corridor and reveal the monster underneath it, unless you want to add any extra detail. No, the, the detail was just the ordering of, I think it would be sound to show him the creature before going to the okay. long corridor, on the off chance that something with the long corridor is weird and fucky, so he knows what he's dealing with and is slightly more prepped for, like, the long corridor is going to be weird. Yeah, it's, it's long. Um, okay, 100%. <laughs> um, yeah, you take him round to see the monster first, and on its withdrawal, you can see him holding himself together, stealing himself. Uh, he also... He will leave... He will tell Elizabeth to stay and rest in the kitchen with Mr. Potterton. Um, and, uh... Miss Wentworth, do you want to go and stay with this, or do you want to stay with your sister? Mr. Uh, Dr. Parsons is going to make a roll shortly, a medicine roll. You can stay here and be attending to assist as much as you can. Um, this is kind of getting her to stable. Uh, this I... is not taking you out of the hole forever. This is just these no. next couple beats. I'm very happy to do that. I'm, I'm very happy just to be present. Uh, I also don't know if I'm actually realistically going to have any help. I was, I'm vaguely considering going and speaking to the old dowager uh, because uh, now we have a bit more information. It might be the moment to kind of like, hey, listen. But yeah. I think that I'm very happy to be parked and I, I assist for the time being. And if, if the doctor after a while says bugger off, I, I, I'll, I'll vanish. Okay, so you, you can, but you can stay for a moment with your sister, hold her on and... Um, 
basically just try and get her through this. All right, so it's Reverend Jennings and Captain Stone that uh, walk with uh, Lord Northlake and see him react to these. Uh, I'm gonna make a sanity roll for him. I'm gonna do it to Whisper to Keeper though. I'm gonna hide it just in case his sanity. Um, he... I, do, I do prep, obviously. I'm like, sir, this is a, this is quite something to behold. I know it makes absolutely no difference mechanically, but I do uh, still do my duty to prep for both as much as possible. You escort him to see the monster and the long corridor. He also takes with him both times the head butler who um, is standing behind him. And you also get the slight impression is like, you know, the kind of person that was there, like served the family for a while and has probably known uh, Sir is James this... since childhood. Um, yeah, is it? Yeah, no. So we're he not would, quite he would in the timeline where too. like someone... No, there will be no crossover with no. No one would have passed a hundred years, so they wouldn't. Not none oh, of no, these. Oh no, not that. Would sorry, have... whether there was any crossover with military, but I don't think we're quite in the time where the the like. The no, the, he does. This the, this this man has has been in service all his life and and worked with the North. Um, that doesn't stop him being in good with a gun. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And he has some. Uh, he he was carrying a, a shotgun. Oh, as, the, as the head were. butler is afforded an inordinate amount of respect, yeah. even as like someone from a different class of society this this man is good at his job that's right that's right and so, is treated as such um lord northlake goes to see the 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 monstrosity and the long corridor both of these he um observes notes and deals with probably just jamming to the first back of his mind he also does just take it as fact that these things are happening and will deal with the rationality of it all at another time he seems grateful to have a man of god and a man of the military there with him because he considers those the two most relevant aspects at the moment um at one point you will hear um the head butler uh mr hillier lean across to him and say it seems as though it may be relevant to fetch your great grandfather's diary. And uh, Lord Northlake says, yes, fetch it, um, find Lydia as well, and um, let's see if we can deal with this once and for all. Uh, oh, Lord, if I may as well, if, um, if the staff are amenable to doing so, it may be time to bring the party to an end. Um, with the possible exception of any able-bodied men who can wield a weapon of some description. It I leave is, it to you, though. It is your party. The hour is late. Perhaps, yes, perhaps it's best that things begin to resolve. Um, we'll see that things are, are, are drawn quietly to a close without making much fright, but uh, acting swiftly, then. Um, at, so, James... Um... I understand this is, is quite a sensitive matter. Um, is there any... Would your mother be an appropriate... Um, would it be appropriate to speak to your mother about the, the Lady Dowager um, Northlake, about this situation, sir? I would not make this suggestion given her current state and no, her need I, for rest were it not less urgent I understand and my mother has been troubled of late but she was closest with my grand's father I only knew him some short years in my childhood and he knew more of our family's history than I did I admit I never had any great love of looking backwards I wanted to make make a name for myself Fortunately, she's asleep now. Laudanum has taken her, and waking her would not be easy. We can try, though. What I suggest is... There are some writings from my great-grandfather. Uh, they're uncomfortable things. He wrote them in a troubled time after his son died, and... Although they have been kept, as many articles are, I've never studied them or taken great pains to. I knew my mother did read them at some time, but this was long ago, and I can't recall the details of them. But if Mr. Hillier suggests they may be relevant, then I'd urge... I'd urge us to study them first and see what conclusions we can draw. 
Captain Stone, you say that these things came from the corridor. Would you... Yes. Would you help me in boarding the door through to the house so that at least anything emerging would be naturally drawn out into the gardens where we may set a watch and deal with it? I think the practicals must be looked to first before we deal with the esoteric. Uh, yes, quite. In fact, um, boarding both ends of the corridor, not just boarding, but... Um barricading, fortifying would, would be my first course of action, as well as mustering any any weapons across the house that we can. I, I should very much appreciate an inventory of our assets. I have some... The, uh, I have some... eventuality of a battle. I have some birding shotguns that we've taken, and a small set of fine dueling pistols that are my own. Unfortunately, I never had a chance to make a replica of your fine rifle, but there's ammunition for it here, and I hope it'll serve you well. We have large tables for butchering livestock ourselves, and they can be drawn across the doors. We'll just need strong men to move them. Um, he begins to turn and, and, and snap out orders uh, towards the staff members who uh, will set to uh, erecting a barricade. Captain Stone, you have military expertise with this. Do you want to kind of put your weight behind this a bit and oh, turn absolutely. this into some barricade? That's exactly what I had in mind. Like, once again, the knight is devolving from, uh, you know, a situation that he has no knowledge about to a situation he actually could probably do okay Yeah, at. 100%. So, yeah, uh, get, get around to mustering soldiers, know how to, like, you know, barricade the corridor and, you know, identify where the where the best positions are, where the good shot lines are, where to, where to hire, where to set up the... where to set up the last stand, as yeah. it were. Can I get you to roll a, um, my instinct is education or intelligence, something like that, to kind of represent your military experience? I think education would be the most appropriate, kind of you are a military Artillery man, angles. <laughs> artillery would absolutely apply. I'm really just taking a moment to gaze around my character sheet and then looking for the highest number I can argue, and I think it'll be education. If you're having a think quickly as well, just, d does, do the Northlakes have hunting dogs? Yeah, they, they they would they would have some a dogs bunch of elsewhere dogs on the, in the corridor. Could be. <laughs> yeah, they 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 can sit at least one fine pooch. Um, oh, poodle. <laughs> actually, I would say I think there's there is a level of like they probably do fetch a dog to help with the watch. And um, we'll stay with Helio once he returns to to keep an eye on the things. As the dogs are brought towards the corridor, there is much baying and you know retreating from the animals. They are well trained, but even they retreat from this area uncomfortable. Only one of the oldest sort of bassets or something, which little use in combat, but sturdy and well trained, will lie at the entrance of the corridor, hackles raised, and stand between whatever comes out and its masters. Um, but the rest of them retreat from the area, unwilling to, to assist. Oh my god. Hmm. Now there's a fine roll. Now that's um the opposite of what I wanted, which was another crit like I got last session. So yeah. that's okay. Swings I around about. think we're All gonna, comes out in the wash. I think Captain Stone, you're gonna be working on that for a little while as we return to the other parties, um, uh, who will have an opportunity to to study uh, the information revealed, and also we need to make a roll for uh, Miss Emma. W uh, so, our uh, wounded investigator survives. Um, I'm gonna fetch up Dr. Parsons' sheet. My right, good sir. Now, that's potted. Here we are. Ah, a fine thing. Okay. Uh, James, I'm gonna make a, a medicine roll here, and uh, you are going to uh, give a bonus dice. I am fighting. Uh, this is this is likely going to need a hard to make real progress, the rest will just be trying to keep things in stasis. I think I mostly have done really no medical expertise, so I'm mostly just calming my sister, like talking to her, whispering to her, uh, trying to make everything okay. okay. If, if, uh, if we're back in the scene at all after speaking to Sir James, uh, I am going to be praying over the situation. Yeah. Um, you say a few quiet words. And uh, over it is the, as, as you can see, that uh, Dr. Parsons has opened the, uh, the dress and the corset beneath it, revealing the pale chest flesh beneath. At first, you think that the, well, first you confirm that the corset was ruptured and the sort of like the bones that hold it in place have been splayed outwards. And then you see that it is not only the bones from the corset that have punctured through, there is pieces of the age which have begun to be peeled out and ripped 
upwards through skin to reveal wet organs underneath. Um, That's Miss not good. Wentworth, I'm going to ask you to make a sanity roll as you see your sister in this dice. But actually, we're going to hold that because the outcome of this roll may affect it. Okay, yep. Oh, wonderful. And That's so good. Stars. Hold on him. What a champion. Right off the top. Dr. Parsons has rolled up his sleeves, washed his hands and scrubbed in for surgery. He has cleaned the wound as best he can and it's only a moment that you see a thing revealed before he begins to carefully place skin back in areas, reset bone, and he will work here for as long as it is required. Uh, or, uh, hopefully he's not disturbed by any monsters bashing through. I miss one with I am going to still ask you to make a sanity roll, but you can see some, there is hope. And when, when Dr. Parsons takes a break from the surgery, uh, he will tell you that it's still uncertain. It's touch and go. And she's with God as much as with me, but I have hope she'll, if she can see out the night, she will still have a life in front of her. Thank you. Earnestly, thank you. If I probably call him by his first name, which I can't remember off the top Winston. of my head. Winston then. Uh, would go to like squeeze his arm, but I'm um, probably got a hand covered in blood, so I won't. Um, actually, we don't know about. Sanitation. Yeah, get there. Yeah, put the, put the blood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and make a sanity um, roll, please, Jimbo. Yeah. Here we go. And it's just the threat of a point here. Okay, you're Hard handling success. it all right. You're dealing with yeah. it. Um, you can see that she's better, and once she's drugged, she will begin to uh, um slip into in into sleep. Um, all right. Uh, Captain Stone is elsewhere preparing a formidable barricade that certainly shall not be breached easily. Um, it's true. Mr. Hillier returns with a, a set of old diaries and will lay them out before you. Um, uh, Lord Northlake and soon his wife uh, appearing, embracing his daughter and uh, beginning to be caught up somewhat on the scene. There's a little bit of level of help out Elizabeth and then begin to help with the party because genuinely that is also what's needed. Miss Elizabeth does not want to go and help. She wants to stay here and stay up to date on everything that happens. So she is remaining also under the guise of continuing to recover. Mr. Potterton will be retrieved by his elder sister. He is escorted out of the kitchen to be handed over so that the elder sister is not does not see Miss Emma Wentworth in any state of distress. Uh, and as he goes, you are kind of aware of as he leaves, he is mumbling some things about like, you know, the strange trophy Captain Stone found. Like he's out there and has knowledge and he wasn't mm. really ever locked down. He is probably in like a bout a little bit, you know, he's <laughs> mostly harmless. It's more a seed for future. You know, he's out there and kind of is aware of things. And How he rationalizes that is up to him. And to be clear, we are still trying to, as a collective, maintain the facade that they're, the party's fine. Don't yes. worry. Let's okay, cool. and now And now we're trying to bring it to a quiet close. We'd like to yeah, wrap that's it up. Right. That's right. Yeah, with the, with, I don't know if it's, it's probably a bit of a push to, you know, just say to any, uh, any party goers with, firearm experience could, could stay behind for a bit longer. <laughs> that may be too far, well, right? Yeah, no, they're gonna... You're dealing with staff there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's gonna be... It's gonna only be staff, and even then... It, it, genuinely, the only one that might be suggested to remain would be the other Reverend Choke, as he... Mm -hmm. Not a not a, not a man of weapons, but he is another man of God. And is also be, would be one of the most, like... He, he's, he's a bit studied in as close to occult manners as we may find. Um, you also know him to be a fairly fiery tempered man, and he may not be the most level headed in this circumstance. I'd kind of pass that to you. If you want to have him retrieved or let him slip out into the night. A carriage that will bear him home. I would leave that probably to Sir James as to whether or not he wishes to have an ad because the more people who know about this the default is going to be let him go he's got a man of uh, god here and you are you are the one you are the church that he goes to currently and he doesn't he wouldn't think of it or deem it necessary he also would like to keep this as closed circle as possible mm. yeah he seems um, like the the kind of uh the other reverend is like it's like he's like the, the the kind of person who hates drama and causes all the drama. That's yes, I, that's, that's 100%, the one I got from. I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he strikes me as the hellfire preacher. He's the one that comes down and is like, "If you do not obey the laws of God, you will burn in hell forever." Yeah, he's, um, and he's the of... one that preaches like, "Have nothing, like have no ego. You need to be better than." And then has a huge ego tied up in being the second 
most popular preacher. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he is also jammy though. He does have some skills, but uh, unless unless five he heals about. Okay, so the, purely the fact that he and I have not had a single word of conversation this entire evening, just because of the way this this scenario rolls out, yeah. I don't think it is something that I would be like, ah, oh, this man knows things. Or like, in terms of if we had even spoken, even if he just said you're the worst, I would have been like, maybe he's someone we could. But no, we I, I have not spoken to him. So. You're both in the same room once, and he made two snide remarks, and that was the, that was as close as you've gotten. Mr. Asher never got the conversation that he that he was looking for. Okay, yeah. um, so uh, Mr. Helio returns, um, and is there, as is there worth moving into? Sorry, just for like, because obviously this is technically all happening in the kitchen. But I'm wondering whether, like, moving the conversation and things that are happening into, like, the dining room as opposed to being still in the kitchen is appropriate or whether we're fine to just be in the kitchen. If Miss Wentworth wants to be in the discussion, Miss Georgiana, and is also unwilling to leave her sister's side, yeah. the party is now done, so no more canapes will be flowing. This is actually a serviceable base of operations. It is also directly adjacent to the long corridor, and they've kind of just locked off this section of the house. If you all head up the, like, stairs towards the... The upper room which is also private it will be more of a to do so it's been said to just kind of keep it keep it down here for the time being mr hillio returns with a uh sort of older uh, diary well kept and clearly un uh open for some time he's sort of comes down with the clutching it and will pass it across to lord northlake who begins to, to thumb through it but does so in a manner where the rest of you here everyone present but captain stone who's overseeing the fortifications can uh, look over it and study it. Uh, it was written by Alistair and it uh, it documents the period uh, before his son's death, uh, through the death and into the short time afterwards uh, before he, uh, he took his own life. It never mentions anything directly occult or esoteric. Instead, it only talks about his great problem and the burden that he must bear. Um, I would ask anyone studying it to please give me, it's gonna be a language English role to pass through this as quickly as possible and to uh, interpret the information within it. On its surface, it genuinely <laughs> comes across as a bit of a man who is incredibly stressed and a little bit mad. Uh, I have, I'll make, are we doing this like individually? Does one of us need to do this? Oh, well, you and I are researchers. I'll I'd... give you a bonus die. I would expect you have higher education than me. Oh, uh, no, no, it, well, it was, it's going to be language English. So, whichever one of you has that skill. I think it's equal to 75. Yeah. yeah, Unle yeah unless so. it's been increased. Because you, you are a reader, Mr. Wentworth. Point. So, just check that. I'm not suggesting that because I know it has been. I'm genuinely. Uh, I think. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm 60. So, you go wild. If it's in French. I mean, if it's in Latin, it's in English. I'll still it's be able to like yeah, maybe yeah. do French. Uh, sorry, if it's in French, I, I've got Latin. But what anyway. about a hard success on on Latin? <laughs> well, it's a hard success on English. I go ahead and take that bonus dice just because yeah, yeah. see if you can get down to an extreme. Okay, hard uh, success. Well done. All right. Um, studying over this, you see, yeah, a few references to the great problem to which I must find a solution. You see him um, absolutely ruined by the death of William. Uh, which is not specifically mentioned. Uh, and you will also find him uh, uh, discovering some small comfort in the birth of another son, which is the, uh, it will be the great grandfather of uh, Sir James that will continue to pass down the line. It is shortly after that that he um, perishes in the unfortunate incident that you've become clearly aware is him taking his own life. It appears that he may have basically held on long enough to have an heir he dies like the year of or the year after and, like really and quickly. therefore would have not been in a position to pass down any knowledge about uh architectural you know well no, imperatives. with 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 any you get you get the point he goes here no longer and you actually get the impression he is refusing to pass on information he goes into this with a deeper understanding of the family history than has continued past him. He basically severed that line and let it and let it uh, linger no longer. That said, there is one piece of information that you can find, Reverend, with a hard success. Uh, there is a section 
buried in margins, obscured in esoteric text and mad prose, uh, in which you find the line, I pray this incantation may save those born of my son's son. I can do no more. May God forgive me. And then there comes just some strange texts and symbols which, reverend, mean nothing to you, but Miss Wentworth, with a cold chill, recognize almost. Here's those dancing figures that strutted around the black obelisk in that dark place, and it's not Latin, it's an older and fouler tongue, but you have the mouth to speak it. This here is a spell. This here is a spell that suggests if cast by that dark obelisk and with blood spilled across it, it may be closed without the eldest Northlake's death. Okay. Blood spilled across it. Just to be clear, are we, does this mean a specific sacrifice or is it just the application of blood? So, uh, interpreting that further would require... Now, ideally it would be an occult role. Um... Do any of you have, or I would probably, I could see an argument for, nah, it's really not religion. This is another place here. Cthulhu Mythos would definitely be pertinent. I mean, we should Only try the occult. Well, here's the thing. Learning the spell good. alone, here's, so to put it more plainly, you have, through this, you get the suggestion that previously the, uh, the portal has been closed with the death, the, the sacrifice. I mean, also, basically this thing opens, and then now it must be shut by sacrificing the eldest Northlake child. This spell seems to suggest that it might be done without sacrifice. Blood must be spilt, yes, but it can be augmented with, for lack of a better word, magic to close the spell without someone needing to be killed. Now, to learn the spell, you'll need a hard intelligence roll, um, and casting it will take will take power. Uh, but otherwise, you will you come to the conclusion that you will need to sacrifice um, a living person. And Understood. they must carry the fourth legs blood. The natural conclusion uh, drawn would be a list. So the or, I mean, the dowager's not got too long left in the back of my mind, but let's try and learn a well, spell. Well, the dowager married in. Damn. As did Lydia. So, so uh, th that sorry. thread, there is another. It would be Sir James. Is also a full-blooded Northlake. He's not the eldest. So just but... to be, just to be clear we would require either the sacrifice of a North Lake or blood to be spilled with this spell. Does the blood still need to be North Lake? So uh, that will be interpreting the spell and learning if it will be a hard intelligence role. Uh, the, your, the, having thought of that, you can't see anything that suggests otherwise. And it does seem to be tied to the North Lakes. So presumably, yes. Uh, I perhaps perhaps I spend some time going over this. I can try and get uh, uh, abreast of it. If you want to try and make sure that we we're, we're ready to go in and 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 do what we need to do as soon as we can. Um, I'm just gonna throw. I have an intelligence of seventy. Same here. So happy to okay. happy to either, either way. I think it would be rather nice and poignant if we tried to do this together. Let's do it. <laughs> um, if that's as in one of us assists the other in sure. learning, yeah. and I am very happy for like, essentially, I look and sort of go, hmm, I'm not sure whether like, you know, there is standard thing. I'm not sure whether the, the lady has the intelligence to muster such a complex. Wait a yeah. second. No, yeah. no, I think perhaps, and this will be like, I in the moment if it is if it is something that Georgi Georgiana can learn in the moment it will be like oh no this woman does have the intelligence to learn it and should absolutely yep. be able yep. to do so I, I, I like that narratively and also I've got 80 power so I'll I, I think yeah. I've got I've I do got have a, pretty a, a pretty not bad power but not 80 so all right let's 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 go for it I'll I'll make an intelligence roll then if that's okay. all right that is you are going to need a hard intelligence roll, roll to learn this with a bonus dice for my assistant. Do you have a bonus yeah. dice? Here we go. That is a failure. And with the bonus die, it is not within luck range for me. And it's not so within Is there bonus. a push shape for this? I think there is. Yeah. Um, there is a push shape for this. And I think if we follow it, we might make that roll at the time of casting. 
I love it. Yeah, let's do it. So do you want to do you want to go with that? Do you want to go? I am effectively pushing this, and the but basically the penalty for pushing is you won't know if it succeeds or not. That's what I'm saying, and you're not going to be able to lock it. Remember, I totally understand. Um, I think that uh, although I am the sensible elder sister, uh, while my younger sister is in peril, that's all out the window because uh, I lose all sense of my identity and therefore will push forward uh, for anything here. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So, studying this strange spell, you commit as much of it to memory as you can. It's got references to incantations, to a ritual that must be prepared, and will take some small time uh, to cast. You will need to do so also from that black altar, and given it will take a period to do so, you will need to be protected while it's happening. Should anything try to assault you to stop this, uh, then you will need someone to defend you because you will be busy ritualing. Additionally, you are still aware of blood that needs to be spilled, and you have found no suggestion that it can be anyone but Northlake. You can take a risk and try it yourself, but genuinely you do not have the confirmation that will work, and there is a good chance it doesn't. Your instinct would be spill Northlake blood on the altar past the ritual. Um, I mean, I think we, like, unless there's a good reason not to, we're going over this with uh, Sir James, this would be relayed to him as a it does appear that there is an alternative. It does still require your family to to like fuel this, but we can we can try to mitigate as much of the the effect as possible. That there does not appear to be another option. Okay. Um, that it, it, this might be quite easy to convince him if also suddenly the barricade is assaulted by a horde of monsters. Have we heard anything about that? Not presently. I'm gonna I'm ask. I'm working on it. Okay, get off my back. He's trying his best. It'll be fine. Um, Don't worry about it. You stressing? Don't stress about it. Don't worry uh, about it. It's fine. Uh, I am gonna ask for a persuasion roll for Lord Northlake, basically explaining to him that we think we've got a way where someone is going to need to make a sacrifice. I am fifty for persuade. Sixty. Oh uh, no, sorry, fifty as well. All right. Well, look. Let's well, back and forth. You do this one. I'll assist you. We 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 make our um, case. Yeah. I, th or maybe I think, I think it, no, I think an assistant still plays here. You've studied the thing and you're, you're making the case together. That's fine. It will be just a... Because he can see what we are reading as well and yeah. is like, from what... Whether... Whether Sir uh, Alistair Northlake was in the best state of mind when he wrote this or not, if we take this at face value, it does appear that there are two alternatives in front of us. The first one is the loss of the heir of the North Lake family and estate, which I, you know, you do not, not want, sir, option. and we do not want. It is not an option. There does appear to be a second option, which, though it does still involve uh, the, the some harm, it is by far less than death itself. And uh, while we cannot say for certain that it will definitely work, there is an, an opportunity here in front of us to resolve this in a manner that does not involve the death of a member of your family, so if you would be willing for us to try, then perhaps we may be able to prevent any further danger or damage to yourself, your family, and this estate. Of course, there is a third option, which is nothing, and at that point, if things escalate, which by the state of the corridor, they appear to be moment by moment, the next negotiation will be with one of those creatures as it attempts to attack. Sick. And we do not know, unfortunately, how many of those there might be, whether or not there is a finite number, or potentially, given that we're dealing with something outside the realm of natural philosophy, an infinite one. Uh, can I ask you to please make a persuade roll with a bonus dice, and this will scale. Oi. A forty-five. Oi. Twenty-five. That is a hard 50. success. Is an Bang hard on. Success. Lord Northlake understands, and will set and will go with you. Is not even necessarily volunteering. He is now doing it. Is there is a little bit of an I'm going and a little bit in charge of this. He pointedly understands that the alternative would be Elizabeth. As he gets it, it's him or her, and he makes... There is no suggestion it would ever be her. He goes, 
with a hard success, he understands the risk here that if this spell doesn't work, and through his interpretation, if that happens and that portal must be closed, he will sacrifice himself to do it. So he goes with you on the understanding that yes, we will attempt to do this spell, but should it fail, he will not return. And agreeing this, he will take a short moment to find his wife and daughter and say goodbye. You have a small period before you will go. And as you make the final preparations, uh, Ilya, the butler, will also attend you, carrying a burning shotgun. Uh, similar weapons can also be procured for the Reverend and Miss Wentworth, who, having proved her, you know, you are the one that knows the spell, so surely you must come as well. Uh, you can also, anyone can add a basic D6 bludgeoning implement. Reverend, you can have your staff return to you if you'd like. You can also fetch a knife for a D4 plus one if you wish it. Or you can have a shotgun, which will work off, unless you have a skill in it, base and it will do, it's just like a D6. I've got the, the mechanics for that there. Uh, so any, feel free to outfit yourselves accordingly. I, I want to have one of those, um, I think they were like book guards. They're like kind of like a lectern thing that you would place a book in so that it was safe and protected, kind of like an external dust jacket, but made yeah. of wood, so I can bonk people with a book. Oh, and you're taking the diary. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's yeah. sick. And also protected, absolutely amazing. Uh, um, I will have my walking cane uh, and more importantly my cross uh, yeah. and i think i will also um i will fetch like if i'm going to uh, to get my effects my bible the one that was gifted to me by my now and for quite for a, a small amount of time my um deceased sister who i care for very much uh i will take that with me so that uh grace from god and grace as my sister comes with me into this moment and i can use both of those elements to protect those who must be protected from whatever demonic horror uh, is is to be brought upon us um for god is testing us and we will prevail as you as you retrieve your bible go back you can say uh uh, Dr. Parsons has returned, um, is, is taking a, a small rest, his eyes closed and his face down. Uh, Miss Wentworth is seated by her sister, holding on to her hand quietly and tightly and whispering quietly. And Lord Northlake is with his wife and daughter, the three of them embraced and speaking. And you are kind of aware that in this place you are alone. And if you take Miss Wentworth with and Lord Northlake, and if they do not return, the agony that you feel every day will be passed to those that survive them. For no one is cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. Lamentations 3, 31, You gather your implements, prepare to return to the long corridor. Someone else that is already present there. And we go now to Jackson. <laughs> Captain Stone. Ready to save the day. You have taken on the arduous effort of barricading uh, this... <laughs> Huge, long, spanning corridor. Now the well, small parlor. Well, the just small. The doors. That's right. The small parlor. It's more just dragging things up and down. The small parlor is. Um, uh, they are, people, guests are still in, so it will need to be barricaded from the inside of the corridor. The oh. other one you can do from the outside, but that you just pile enough heavy things in and then lock the door from the outside, and you know that will slow progress. You do probably. Uh, you you you're sensible enough to realize that taking things from the to. Basically, walk your blockade devices along the servants' corridor, which is way shorter to the end, yes. then place them rather than hauling them up and down. This giant thing. But once inside, you do need to head into the long corridor to head up to the entrance from the small parlor so that you can barricade it yourself. 
you sort of haul the pieces in towards it, firmly blocking it and closing the door on the other side, which you know, sorry, the door on the other side is already locked and you blockade it further from the interior. And then you turn and begin to make your way towards the far side where you can see a couple of blocks have been placed um, high up, just enough for you to scramble over and then the final things put um, into the area. Just as you are passing by that, you know, long painting, uh, not long painting, the one which you know hides uh, the portal behind it. Sorry, not even hidden now. You can see the rift through it. Uh, just as you're moving past it, casting an eye back and forth, checking your work, something slips through and it will attempt to lunge towards you. The first oh. of these attempted uh, intruders. Uh, it is going I to make... we had more time. It is, <laughs> it is going to make an attack against you. Would you like to dodge or repost? And you have effectively secured yourself in here, locked with it. Uh, I it's not locked in here with you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but no, can the right. captain do it again? I should like to riposte since it worked so well for me last time. Okay, leaping, actually not even leaping, at first creeping through the portal comes one of these things. It's long hand down be be behind it and then seeing you, it lunges, closing the distance and lashing out, but not before you can whip forth your saber, level it at the creature's torso and slice at it. Uh, go ahead and make your fighting brawl roll and then I will roll the attack myself. Good start. Are you happy with that success? I have very little luck, so I must be. Okay, uh, the thing lunges right, towards you. And ah, with a failure of your own, you slide point. its thing to the side and level the saber towards it. Uh, three points of damage, two of which are reduced, so only one gets Ooh. through. A small nick along its like heavy matted fur and leather, but it's enough to see dark gray ichor spilt on the side. And then you have the chance to set to step forth and make your own assault. Uh, I turn. shall do so with haste. I will. I will say I can't help but be the me mechanical f numbers aren't in our favour for this. <laughs> no, <laughs> that is one, right? Uh, presently, He's got one. Presently, yeah. Just, uh, it was just the advance advance guard to see if it was you know safe to come through, and I'm here to say no, it's not safe to come through. Oh, oh, I sorry, mean, that... just num I'm looking at the stats on these rolls, and this yeah. is a that, uh, this is a rough fight. <laughs> uh, Captain oh, Stone, that is a it. failure. Uh, it is. You may want to luck it. Oh, okay, three points. Of, yeah, I got three points of luck. Okay, it will. I got ten points of luck now. Uh, it needs a hard success for this to connect. And on only a regular success, five points of damage, one of these huge arms rakes across it. You duck under and another slice, five points of damage, reduced again by two, four points total. Minor blows, small cuts, but not enough to take this thing down as you are being harried backwards towards the barrier, but it's a long, long way away. Now, Captain Stone, it's its turn. It's going to look to attack you. You need to start to make a decision. Are you going to hold your ground here? Try to fight this one-on-one, -on -one, which it currently is, although may, more may come, knowing that there is no chance of reinforcements for yourself. Or do you turn and try to run? Uh, I don't really want to run. I, I think, like, I kind of want to, like, get a good few shots on it, but also push it back toward the door. Okay. Uh, you know, if I can't kill it, then at least I can send it back injured to tell its friends you uh, could... that uh, they're going to have a bad time if they come through. Okay, it's going to attack. On your turn, you have the option of trying to do a brawl maneuver to send it back, or you could try an intimidation. I'm going to say that's probably going to be a hard success to get any kind of weight, but you could just try and find him and just shove this thing back to from where it came. That's, that's said, even though the numbers are against you, you are... Pretty, you're doing pretty, pretty well. It's Fairly pretty well. cool. <laughs> okay. It is its turn. It is going to attack you. Would you like to dodge or repost? Uh, I think reposting has gone pretty well so far. So far, so good. Up. All right, go ahead and make that roll. No. No. That's not happening. Can't last forever. Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> tiring somewhat, Maybe but with, can. with this thing in an, in an unnatural state, it continues to try and attack you, but you're holding your ground. You've dug your boots into this carpet and you have not taken a single step backwards, sending this thing, sort of like holding it right where it's uh, stepped out from the portal and trying to push it backwards. Now it's your turn. You can try and make a maneuver. It will do no damage, but you can push this thing back through uh, or you can just That's continue to try and attack it. Okay, before like you make this roll, I, can I, I still need... use my sword to maneuver? You can. You can use the same dice pool, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to need roll. to know what your build is. Oh, my build? Um, and I, I believe your build is zero, unfortunately. It's true. 
Okay. You are going to have a penalty dice on this roll as this thing is built. Think of that, did I? Uh, that's Maybe fine. Maybe attacking is. Oh god. <laughs> How much damage have I done? Uh, three. It 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 is. It is. It is. <laughs> I think you've done, you've done you've done four. I think you did. Yeah, no, I, I said that comment. I was I was going back to check. Uh, you have done you have done four. You did one and three. It, it is it is better. It is a better fighter than you. It has armor, uh, and it, do, it deals more damage. Uh, so it, so it's not a good fight. I really but, have just gotten lucky up to this point, haven't but I? But it's not massively better than you, not... and you kind of got the edge. I can Maybe. do it. Just a penalty die. That's that's. I've I've had worse odds. Okay, it is going to repost. Done a lot better, and I've had a lot better odds and done a lot worse. So it is going to repost. Swings and roundabouts. All right. It feels like going... it feels feels. Okay, look, you're you so I, I trust you, Captain. I'm going to attack. This is my attack, right? With a penalty die because I'm maneuvering it. Yep. No damage will go through. Nah. Okay. Dang. I would have liked that a 26. bonus. A bonus would have been great. All right. It is it is going to attack you. Oh, so oh my god! <laughs> What's a, another another round of a stalemate? Um, at at this point, that is your turn. Is going to go back to it. Um, uh, let's do. Uh, can I get listen rolls from Reverend Jennings and Miss Georgiana to see if you can uh, begin to, to make your way here? Flagging that uh, there is still a oh barricade. Oh, well I'm done. Several hundred meters away. There is a barricade and several hundred meters of corridor, so it is going to be a beat regardless. Both of you hear this. It's 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 distant. It's almost as if possibly, you know what? It's a long way away around, but just through the wall, he's right on the other side. You hear the yell of Captain Stone's battle cry because in your sense, you're in this large space, uh, and the two of you can immediately act. If you wish, you can race for the uh, the blockade and begin to make your way through. Absolutely, race for the blockade and make our way through. Okay. Uh, do, are we taking? I know Sir James is coming with us, but are, yes. do we have any other kind of um, like? Is the head? Did you? He and Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier is coming as well. He has armed himself with a shotgun. Yeah. Um, he might be waiting for Lord Northlake though. This no, no, they're, a... they're coming too. They're just going to oh, race great. behind you. They're 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 all going to make their way. Okay. Uh, Reverend Jennings and Miss Georgiana. I, yeah. Uh, I, I will probably be like a little behind, uh, because I I will ensure that like. Lord Northlake and, and everything is set up for us because I am worried about the, the safety of the house and, and everyone in it. So I will be a little behind, uh, but I, I will move in that direction. Okay. So. Um, can I get both of you, uh, you can either make a climb roll to clamber over the barricade or a strength roll to begin disassembling it. A hard because we'll actually fully take, tear the whole thing apart. Oh, we still need that up. So I guess climb it is. Okay. All right, here we go. The thunk. <laughs> okay, not not <laughs> no not on this first one. You are stalled here for the moment. You will need to begin to disassemble it. And on this this full round, we'll go through. Reverend Jennings, you escorting the other two will arrive now as well. Uh, we go back to Captain Stone and the monstrosity, which it is its turn. It uh, strikes once more. Would you like to repost or dot? Uh, its turn, is it? Yep, then yours. I lost track. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Um... I don't think there's any harm in reposting. Okay. Go ahead and make your roll. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Versus. Come on, keep missing. <laughs> Another yes, miss. Captain Stone. Uh, something. I'd like to point out my damage is going up. I don't. Well. Something is on your <laughs> You're side. You're the measure of it. There is. Uh, so with that one, that was six damage. Another four points goes through. None of these have been enough Five? to be. Or is it? Two that it, it reduces by two, two. Reduces by two. Oh, okay. uh, none of these have been large enough to be major wounds, and this thing is beginning to find the battle turning against it. Uh, it strikes us more, you repost, slicing through, and it is now below the threshold. It is below half. Blood is splattering down before it, and as it goes to your turn, and it is your action, it's your turn, it is turning to retreat through the portal. It has taken enough damage, and it is running. What would you like to do? I'm inclined to let it go. Okay. That was my plan all along, was all right. to let it get back with, uh, you know, covered in wounds. Yeah. Um, so, if anything, that fumble, that fumble was just all according to plan. It just <laughs> sent the message. That's right, yeah. That's right. Okay. All right. Uh, as it, as it turns... There's no like... need to take the barricade apart. It's, it's, it's good. Okay. You do not try and press your advantage. You don't risk 
an attack for fear of the repost and you're seeing this thing turn and flee back through the portal uh you have scared it and succeeded somehow trapped one-on-one -on -one with a monster that through all numbers should be more powerful than you <laughs> captain the stone has held his ground again and sent it back into the unknown well done that's right okay um standing but, uh, here now now, now and now it knows what I was feeling earlier in the evening. Yeah. Standing here and uh, keeping your guard up, uh, the others can can make their way through the barricade in short order. It will be closed behind you. The rest of the staff will close the door and jam more things, and there is no uh, easy exit from here. The three of you... Are we can exit to the garden, though, can't we? Like, that way is still... No, they, they barricaded that one closed, too. That was, the one that, that was the one that had stuff. Yeah, that one, the door was broken, so they can't lock it, but they have barricaded it from the outside. You can get there and hammer on it, and they'll begin to open it. But if you, you know, if you're fleeing, this is another place they can chase you into. This corridor has been locked in, so that if, in the case something sneaks through, they can try and repel it. Okay. Yeah. Gathering it's in front of the there. portal, which is now clearly open, a rift through space through which you can just make out distorted slightly this distant barren plain. Um, the three of you gather along with uh, Lord Northlake and Mr. Hillier, Ed Butler. Uh, Captain Stone has held his ground here and repelled the intruders, um, but now there's only one thing to do, and that's to step forward and into the darkness. Yeah. Just because it popped into my head um there was nothing in alistair's journal that referenced the gem in the library the uh such and such made me as i made him gem. no not directly that wasn't his quote but you would probably find some reference to uh the materials that made our wealth and cursed as they are we'll seek them not again uh they were definitely retrieved from this dark place uh, but this has not happened in some time. Uh, just making making sure there's no reference to like that as part of a ri the ritual or anything like that. We don't have to like return what was taken or anything. Don't seem relevant. It seems to be just the blood being spilled. Right. Maybe if we survive this, further research is required. But for now, off ski. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. Um. The portal. All right. The three of you head towards the portal and begin Once to before. slide your way five through. Five of us? Five of you, sorry. With your, with your, two, with your two buddies. <laughs> um, the five of you yeah. begin to head through the portal and make your way through. Uh, I need dexterity rolls from everyone. Those of you that have already mm -hmm. gone through it before can do so with bonus dice. Uh, Reverend Jennings, this is your first time. In your, Reverend Jennings, if I don't remember, you need, please make a sanity roll once you get through for portal and strange, yeah. strange nonsense. Yeah. Okay. I'm, uh, it's gonna be a D. Uh, it's gonna be a D three on failure. I'll ask you all to resolve that because I'm quickly just gonna roll for my, my friend. I got an extreme success. Can I help anyone else through? Because I know what's coming. Uh, yeah. Who who would you like to send a bonus dice to? Eh, uh, probably the Reverend. Okay. Reverend, go ahead and take 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 a bonus dice as Captain Stone can can lead you. Quickly roll for my oh, buddies. That's a crit. That's a, that's a crit. Oh, holy that's shit! A one. You do a flip. We're all good. I'm really glad that wasn't an 80 over 50 because that would have been an 100. But yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a one. Do I get anything for that? Oh, not what? Not one d30. That is not. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, let me just. Oh my god. Oh um, boy. Okay. Uh, both of those ones are fairly badly injured. Uh, we. On a crit. We got a crit and an extreme success. Well, the extreme success uh, was what gave us the crit. Ah, uh, I tell you what. Uh, make it, make, make a, make a sanity roll, please, first, Reverend. Everyone emerges out to the other side. I'm just going to update my health pool here. Yes. Yeah. Um, you're going to take one point, please. Um. As um. Supporting my health pools. Um, as you head through this and, and on a critical success, you'd find yourself sort of meandering through this strange plane sits alongside ours and connects to the North Lake Hall. Now, however you've rationalized this as, you know, an element of 
god's domain or something that sits next to it. Uh, a small pocket. Uh, previously, the three of you, or four of you, had this suspicion that this was tied into the cellars, and you've kind of naturally begun to think of it as such. You know, this is a this is another room connected to this one. It's accessed strangely, well hidden, but another room it is. As you're sliding through these planes, you become aware that with more contortions and with keener eyes, you might slip further between even these gaps and into yet more distant places. Now, oh there is a passage between this absent world and the North Lakes estate that exists in our own reality. This is but one of many. There are branches here that go far past God's world. Well, that's up to you, Herman, actually, but they go into yet more spots. You can close this one, you can patch it, hopefully, with Miss Wentworth's assistance, but you're beginning to realize just how big the world is. Reverend Jennings, can you please gain one point of Cthulhu Mythos? Very from the nice. first of the campaign. Very cool. Lovely. I believe that uh, also automatically reduces my overall sanity. Oh no, it's only your maximum by good. one. That's right. But only from a hundred. Like uh, you... yes. Oh, that's to right. ninety-nine. That's right. Sorry. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Lovely. So I'm still, I'm still good. If I start, if I get up to, you know, forty odd Cthulhu mythos, God help us all. That's when it starts <laughs> eating into my total. <laughs> okay. Um. You, uh, so you all emerge out into the, uh, into this barren world once more. You're standing at the high, the sort of, and the midpoint on the bowl, looking down at the, uh, obelisk and the altar in its center. You can visibly see Lord Northlake and, uh, Mr. Hillier are damaged by the passage. They are shrunk over, clutching at their, their organs, which have been rearranged inside them, and in some agony. I have rolled their sanity tests, but I have done so privately. There is no visible emotion so far, although they recoil in disgust from this dismal space. Uh, yeah. There are signs of two of these creatures immediately. One of them has rolled down the uh, bank and towards the altar and is dead uh that is the one uh sorry i'm gonna add some more explanation to that is like sprawled flat unmoving on the ground that is the one that you attacked when it uh, attempted to kill miss emma or do something to emma the other is the one that you wounded uh it is just now arriving on the side meaning to pull itself over retreating but you can see there's more of these things on the outside it has been damaged far enough to cause it to retreat in terror, and there is no waiting party out here just yet. Um, the altar is down the bottom, and you can just make your way down towards it. It is the retreat upwards under speed that will require rolls. Um, Lord Northlake right. comes through and lets out a... By God, this place is damned. And uh, Helio uh, raises the shotgun to his shoulder and puts his head on a swivel and keeps himself right next to Lord Northlake. I would actually propose a, 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 a somewhat uh, drastic strategy uh, and just charge and encouraging others to follow close behind, screaming my head off because these things have killed, seen me kill one of them and wound another. And then yeah. it's like, we're running in like a battle party. I'm yeah. hoping that'll buy us some more time. Okay. Yeah. Do you want, uh, yeah. I, I, you also would have had a chance to, because they they, saw, they probably came to the thing just as you repelled yet another one through here. The third notch in your belt for Captain Stone. That's it. I, and also, that one friend, you know, went in the part, went in through the portal, and never came back. Yeah, never came back. And you're wearing its hat, its body as a as a cloak. Uh, do you want to get? Do, if the rest of you are willing to follow, you can make an intimidate roll and charge down the thing towards the altar, and you can do so with a bonus dice if everyone is committed to the strategy. This is not stealth here. You are no, known. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I I would have said like just as we came in like this is this is the best idea you know these things do have fear. Okay, all right, go I'm for it. I'm not a I'm not a soldier, so yeah, it seems Excellent. like a legit plan. Ah! <laughs> if it seems like a legit plan, it must be. Ah! 
Go ahead and make an intimidation roll with a bonus dice as the what? five of you roar your way down the side. Ooh, I think you might have enough luck for it. Do you have five uh, That points? is half of my remaining luck, <laughs> but I think this is the time to spend it. If it'll give us time to cast the spell, this is the time. You've seen... I am going to reduce my luck from ten to five. You've seen Charge so many brain. glimpses into Captain Stone's formidable prowess on the battlefield in this long night. To the point that actually you now no longer remember the man who was not timid, but uncomfortable at least in the party. This is the figure that will be cemented in your memory of Captain Stone leading you in charge and you can't help but be invigorated behind him. This is a strange place, but you have a leader in him and by God, there's a chance this just might work. Um, the five of you race down the thing, scurrying black powder and small tiny gemstones to the edges as you arrive at the altar and take up position around it. Miss Wentworth, you are the one that must cast a spell and you know that it will require a sacrifice of some blood to begin it. For everyone else, and you believe it to be Northlake, so Lord Northlake should be uh, nearby you. For everyone else, what positions are you taking up? This will take some time to cast. If there is any way that I can, I'm a preacher and a, and I'm not a fighter. So if there's any way that I can assist in the casting or like assist in the ritual aspect of this, because ritual, hey, guess what, is yeah. what the church does. Um, whether it is like adding additional uh, ephemera to assist whether it is making like trying to make sure things seem to be being done in the right way or in the right order based on just general knowledge of how rituals yeah. uh work at least in the in the christian faith um also just because i have that one point of cthulhu mythos now <laughs> being like Huh, hmm. maybe the rituals or the maybe the forms that we follow when we when we pray and, and work within the realms of God, perhaps there is something older that these were once that, that these are like children of. Maybe what we're dealing with is the ancestors of the rituals we now do. And because like we have tamed them, they have less impact, but perhaps like there's an inkling of like perhaps our rituals in the same way that we tamed dogs from wolves and they've lost their bite perhaps we could find the bite in the in the rituals in the, in the forms that we follow once again um, to yeah. have an impact and to like further god in a in a in a like more miraculous way perhaps that is possible but for now it is just that like ah i i'm invested in this ritual okay um you can a hundred percent you you can you can attempt to assist this is not going to be you giving a flat bonus dice to miss georgiana though because this is such a distant thing you are going to need to independently make a hard religion roll and if that succeeds you will have the opportunity to give a bonus dice this is a f and i won't get to roll that yet we're going to roll these all once i get the where everyone's set because this is you are right there may be bones in your religion but they are long you turn to dust you know you are going to need to reach deep to find any way to help here this is unknown to you most so to clarify i'm going to be pushing the previous roll right yes you are then going to make an initial casting roll which is a hard yep. power roll okay cool um and and if i'm pushing that previous roll do so I still get the dice. bonus die from that situation? So this could be potentially adding a third bonus die. Sorry, no, third, sorry, here second. we're going. Uh, technically what the Reverend Would is I doing need... here is assisting you on the casting. You believe you have learned the spell. Okay. So, so what that would give to me is the is a bonus die on the power roll, but I'll still take roll. the push from the... You're, yeah, you're, cool so roll. first you are going to... You are committing to casting this because you believe you have mastered. You are going to make a hard intelligence roll with a bonus dice because that is still you learning it. That is the push. If that succeeds, you have got it. If that fails, you are going to continue with the casting, but I'm going to treat it as if you are already pushing that roll or maybe I'll just do yeah. a penalty dice. Basically, you're making that more difficult because then we get the risk of like bumbled pushed yeah, casting rolls is where like, yeah. 
really cooked shit happens. So, you know, maybe we just rewrite reality here. We'll, we will see. It. So that's going to happen first. Love Actually, it. so if you fail the hard intelligence, you're going to do the bo the power roll with a penalty dice. Reverend Jennings okay. has an opportunity to possibly reset that. Um, you are also uh, drawing blood from Lord Northlake. Uh, he is standing nearby with a gun at the ready, but he is basically committed to the ritual as well. Uh, Mr. Hillier is going to stand up to you, Captain Stone, and basically do a bit of like a reporting for duty. <laughs> you can set him where you want, and the two of you can can try and set up a perimeter. Uh, yeah, let's uh, we'll patrol a bit, but we're also like barking and 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 yeah. yelling at any of the creatures that come too close. Just oh, like, yeah. keeping that you know panic up for as long as we can. I know it won't last forever because uh, eventually for they'll realize that we're not attacking them, and yeah. eventually they'll realize they got more of them than us. But we're just trying to buy enough time by scaring them away. Okay. Um, they are as animals, which they seem to mostly be. They don't necessarily seem to have a great amount of intelligence. The, the, the scaring them off will, exactly as you say, probably work for a short time. That's what I'm going. That's, um, that's all we need. So as as you begin to set up your patrol, um, <clears throat> Captain Stone, I'll get you to make a spot hidden roll. And you can do so with a bonus dice uh, through effectively Helio's assistance. Um, and this is going to be you keeping tabs on the area. Well done, yeah. Captain Stone. You are in your element. Okay. Are you muted? You're also muted. <laughs> Sorry. I am in and out of my element with rapid speed. <laughs> Every time you're in the dark dimension or fighting a monster, great. Party, bad. Um, so uh, keeping an eye on the area, you can see a number of those glinting jewels in the distance that you're able to as are the eyes of these creatures watching. You have the keen impression that they do not want to take a fight in which they are outnumbered or outclassed, but... This is their world, and there's enough of them that eventually they will have the strength of numbers. Your concern is that with the successful intimidation, you have stalled them, but when they do attack, they will not do so in a position where they might lose. You will be outnumbered when they come. Um, the other thing you'll notice on an extreme uh, spot hidden roll, you'd actually notice this on, on a regular success. Um, at your foot is the one that you slew attempting to kill Miss Emma, or at least hurt Miss Emma. Uh, it was not dead when it fell, only unconscious. You can see your wounds. Oh, More have cool. been added since then. Ah, uh, Like, sections of its flesh have been devoured and chewed off as this thing, still living, but weakened and unable to defend itself was set upon by its allies and consumed. You will also see in the distance, the one that you drove off as they are sort of stalling and the others will set upon it and rip it apart, uh, turning its strength into their own. These right. cannibal creatures with little else to eat in this strange world will find sustenance where they can. Although, you rather imagine your meat might be all the sweeter. That's fine. That's good to know. Or you, you know, you don't, you don't have to be the. Uh, what's the saying? You don't have to be you're running from a lion. You don't have to be the fastest. <laughs> yeah. You just have to not be the slowest. Hundred percent. I attempt to focus on being as stringy as possible. <laughs> Stop, but do, do some cardio. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. Let's make the first. You can tell. Of a series of fairly important roles, Miss Wentworth with a hard intelligence test with a bonus dice. You have no opportunity for luck as this role is being pushed. Jim, take the stage. Uh, here we go. Uh, for the hard intelligence roll with the bonus die, minorly, I think we are, it's maybe going to go. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, I think it went. I know the spell. <laughs> Miss Wentworth, you find... What? You... You have always, like Captain Stone, been apart from society. You would rather read and study. You would rather understand the world around you than accept the society that you are present in. And you found you have rather a knack for opening your mind to alternative beliefs, to things that others would take as stone and seeing water, and remaking it as your own, you have this spell committed, and on a crit you will take a bonus dice on the first casting of it. Holy yeah. shit. 
I my I had a, a backup ploy of, of maybe saying I'd stolen some of Emma's uh, milk of the poppy to try and you know do because I know there's some rules around that for casting mythos stuff. But you know what? There's I didn't even need it. Didn't even need it. <laughs> oh my god! All right. Um, you're confident. You're confident. You also realize on an extreme sense that absolutely you do need to spill the blood of a, of a North Lake. So it is a good thing you brought one with you. Your own blood would not have fulfilled this ritual. Okay. Good to me. Um. Uh, holy shit! Uh, you begin. You begin the casting. Uh, this is going to take you uh, ten minutes to complete the full oh, ritual, heck. and during that time, the others will have to to, to watch your back. Um, we're gonna do the power roll. Let me see how the the, the way that I've got the rules. I might just blow up immediately. Is kind of the yeah. You might. You saw the you saw the power roll for it. Which is yeah, yeah, yeah. Which will which which would. So I think we do want to do it immediately, because otherwise, you know, North Lake might take different actions or something. Up, up to you. Yes, that's true. Yes, you're right. As you, it's kind of because, yeah, no, no, you are correct. Uh, what? sorry. Um, yes. Uh, is it if I succeed in a religion, am I still able to provide yeah. a secondary? Bonus? Absolutely, absolutely. And Stack them up. If we succeed, I know this is a hard. Mm -hmm. Is there a chance that if we were to get a, an extreme success on a power, we could reduce the time of the ritual? Is that a possibility? I or think not it reduces really? the magic points, actually, genuinely. It refunds me those is the raw mechanic. It's been it, so long since we've done proper spellcasting. I'm looking at it now. I don't believe an extreme as written will get you something. What I will allow you to do is to possibly try to change things. Yes, you can try to speed it up. You're a little bit of, hey, we got this far. Let's not mess with the process further. Well, like, instead um, of... It, trading the the refund of magic points for like i'll spend the same amount of magic points can i do it quicker i tell you what thing. jim yeah. we're, we're gonna roll arts first yep. to see if you can if you can assist jim you can choose to require an extreme success and do it faster because you are but you would do it up front yep. you are saying yep. i'm going to manipulate this spell and i'm committing to doing it faster i believe i can i can change this no, I, I, yeah, so I, I understand. So we can so. get art, art. Go ahead and make your religion roll now. It's a straight roll. You'll need a hard success to contribute to this. I, <laughs> I have 50 points of luck I was willing to burn to get down to a hard. So if you uh, maybe want an extreme out of that I just to I really don't, nail it. I, I think you've got it. I think on a hard success, you will get another bonus dice. Um, Yeah, you do exactly that. In this distant place. I'm very religious. <laughs> I, think there's, I think there's an image of... You've taken up the positions. Uh, Lord Northlake has, like, sat down on the altar. He's laid his uh, shotgun to the side. He's still got a pistol strapped under his arm, and he has rolled up the sleeve of his arm and put it on the altar so that a knife can be drawn across it and blood spilled. Miss Georgiana has got the book laid out next to him, although she's barely looking at it. All the words are burned in her mind. She knows them. Uh, and is beginning to start this. Reverend Jennings, you are behind the altar with the obelisk behind you, and with your own Bible before you, there is, like, you could transition that into your own church for just a moment, and you fit the same place as at your pew, and then it sort of swaps back into this dark and dismal dimension. Is it possible, like, essentially for flavor... I, in that moment, I'm like, I'm not a hellfire preacher. I do not believe in that. But I am going to hellfire preach at these beings. I'm going to be like, you are, like, you do not, you do not have dominion uh, where God's light shines and I am a beacon of God and I bring his light into your domain and you will not pass. I'm yeah. going to Gandalf. You will not pass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Going to stand there and just hellfire preach at the weird sheriff things. You also, Amen. and it goes further, it, it, you're preaching back through time to the other Northlakes that have sacrificed their eldest children here. That's not going to happen today. Elizabeth is back in her bed, or in her home at least, and Lord Northlake too will not perish. If this is successfully done, blood will be spilled, yes, but the supporter will be closed without because, death. Because it's hard. I would like to transition to Latin because it is an older language and even though it is not old enough that they would speak it, it is the like the in-between. Yeah. The, like it's, it's Hell the, yeah. one of the oldest languages not one of the, but quite an old language for us. So I will switch to Latin and start Hellfire preaching in Latin. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, 
Jim. Yes. I need Sorry. you to make a hard power roll. You have two bonus dice to succeed on this. So here's my here's the quick quick. I was I was I was thinking what what our numbers were going into this to get this to work, and it actually wasn't great. Which proves that even with a bit of stuff stacked in your favor, it it it, it can it can swing pretty quickly. I'm not going to go for the extreme. That said, this is a straight roll, right? So I can luck this and could potentially push it if we need to. You can you can luck it, and yes, you you yes that is, that is correct. You can push it. Um, that reading said, the. Um, and I'm also yeah, gonna, cool. and I'm also gonna. So you have a, you on a critical, you have a pretty keen understanding how the spell works. So, uh, you are going to take a D4 of sanity for casting this. Okay. Is there a risk of that sending you into indefinite? I have lost one sanity point over the last five you're sessions. I've made final. a ton of rolls, yeah. but I've only lost one. You're doing point. pretty well. Okay, uh, so you're gonna you're gonna lose a D4. That's not too bad. You are also gonna have to spend. And this is on a success. A pretty significant number of magic points. Others can commit them to this casting. You will need to spend a total of 20. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you may have... Uh, I have 12. You may have as many of those as you require. I of course, have... if you I am... spend heaps of them and then something comes along and tries to take your magic points, then... That's right. It goes straight to health. That, yep. So that will close it. You also... And you, and you will need to spill um, Lord Northlake's blood. He can also commit magic points to this ritual. Um, the last thing is... As you have full understanding, this is going to close this portal for another hundred years. That's what it does. That's what the sacrifice accomplishes. You can move this down to an extreme, not increasing the time, but attempting to close this permanent. Otherwise, you will just need to set up the knowledge so that someone in the future can do it again. Okay. So, uh... I wasn't going to do it just for getting this quicker because I think I have faith in, in uh, Crapton and our, our situation, but uh, to get actually this to close properly, uh, can I hit you with a, another another option, uh, Dave? One other pitch. How many magic points did you say you had, Art? Oh. Oh, we may have lost Art for just a moment. 12. No, no, 12. 12. Okay, fantastic. Now we're good. 12. Okay. If... If, uh, if Lord Northlake is willing to commit two magic points, two measly magic points, rather than an extreme success, can I pitch you double the cost? I'll pay 40 between myself and... Nope. You are All manipulating right. the spell. You will need All to right. change it. Let's let's go for it. Uh, Going for the extreme? Do it. Uh, that's... Is there, yeah, is there I... still an opportunity? Do we, do we, if we commit to this, we must get an extreme. You must get an extreme. A hard will not do it. You are, you are so adjusting hard. the spell. A hard will fail. A hard won't close it for a hundred years. A hard will just fail. A hard will do nothing. I'm full of hubris right now. You guys have rolled <laughs> really well, but can it I last? I don't know. I, I think I, I'm all for a glorious failure. Totally, Miss Wentworth, this is your decision. What do you, what your, do you, what do you, you, what do you think? Are we happy for it to, are we happy to, 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 to take a spectacular loss? Uh, I mean, the, that does kind of mean we probably all die, and we sort of need these characters to live at least a little longer, maybe. Yeah, there, there but, are those that uh, can said, tell your story. You did not go through here quietly. Um, but... I, I, I say go all in. I think this is the best kind of yeah, look, opportunity we've had in The storyteller years. in me wants to say go all in. The Reverend is like... Ah, oh, we need to protect people, and if we fail this, that's and that banged, is and that is generally I, and generally where it is 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 Miss Wentworth. It's this kind of is your decision at the end of the day. You are looking down, and whether it's hubris or whether it is desire to solve this permanently, you think you have a deeper understanding of this spell than Alistair did when he wrote it, and you believe he made some mistakes. He thought too small, and you believe you can fix it. I I think I've spent my whole life. Uh, being the sensible older sister uh, and that's because I couldn't see that there was just something slightly beyond what I knew and now I know that I'm sick of being the sensible older sister I'm gonna go for it let's let's get this extreme all right, all right. you need to roll you do also have luck do you not <laughs> a little bit you need to roll an ex oh, no, I didn't know you didn't have any luck. James, you need to roll an extreme success on this power roll. And we are still then doing the casting you may be assaulted yep. but that is to begin the process uh, what is your power 80? My power is eighty. Which All right, means I need sixteen. Oh, that's you have three bone. You have two bonus dice. You may push and luck. Go ahead and make the first few rolls. First roll, 
37. Uh, not, uh, not gonna be enough within my luck range to get down, I think. Wait, 37. Roll it, just roll once more. 21. 11. No, 21. That is not no. gonna do it. I tell you, don't reveal oh, your I luck and don't reveal your luck until you roll, roll the first three. All right. Oh. Now reveal, are you able to luck that first I one? have 11 points of luck, so oh, 37, heck. no. Okay. I regret everything. <laughs> that is our, James, you are going to need to push this roll and you will not be able to luck it. Can I, Let's... as a question, I know we, we, we cannot, like, because I'm assisting with this and spending magic points potentially i can't do anything with my luck in this i game. think i no. think i've hubris us i've hubris us and i will i will you cannot the cost we're pushing yeah and also and so before now as you push it because i believe you are pushing it understand you are investing the magic points in the spell all of you are this is gone the spell is going ahead miss georgiana is overriding it and is going through with raw power because there is a real risk that that gets doubled and every, and that starts draining your blood so it's gone. Reverend, you are committing. So commit the points now. Write it down how much you need to sacrifice because there is a risk that more of that is happening. Okay. Uh, I, I draw. How many? You need to do, I, it, I, it needs to be a total of 20. Miss Wentworth, um, I will ultimately leave the decision of how to assign that division to you. You can discuss it, but final call is yours. I will. Uh, I need four points from you, Reverend. All right. Uh, if there's a risk that this goes poorly, you don't... You know what? Sure. You may have four. I will take the 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 scar of my hubris upon myself and let's let's make this roll uh, oh how much uh, how much are you taking from uh lord Northlake? zero okay uh you do the sacrifice though uh it is as written it deals it deals uh five points of damage to him Ooh. ow he is on five hit points and i'm gonna roll a constitution roll to see if he is still actually it's not a major wound he's just up he is up he's just badly damaged as a huge splash of blood coats the thing uh james go ahead and push there that roll go. So, which uh, is oh, oh sorry, uh, no 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 I sorry, think... genuinely re uh, remove oh, that. Yeah, do it sorry. do it as a reroll. Do it as a reroll. Ignore that one. Yeah, and re roll roll and then do it with two bows. Oh, maybe that was the first bonus. <gasps> nope. You need to. You can't. He cannot lock it. He needs zero. a zero. And you got a seven. Bad luck. Terrible luck. Terrible luck. But there we go. It's a fail. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's, point. let's get, I, I, I can't it. it's, a, it's a push. And you can't, like, a push roll and you're one point off. It was the, it was the seven, it was the seven that did me in, because I actually, I hit the numbers I needed to get it, uh, but, uh, I had a seven, I had a, I, my, 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 yeah. hard success is 16. Yeah. Yeah. With, not a, one. as close as she came. Ms. Wentworth mm. attempts to override it and not just close this portal for a hundred years, but take on the burden on herself and close it forever. Lord Northlake's uh, arm is slashed and crimson blood splashes across the altar and immediately begins to drain through the cracks where you see inscribed the initials of his ancestors that came before, not his ancestors, but the eldest children of his ancestors that came before him where they were slain here. As it begins to go through, incredible power begins to thrum through the space. Filling the energy, filling the air with energy as crackles of light begin to dart around it, and Georgiana chants uh, the undertones of the Reverend's Latin incantations underneath it. The distant stars flare occasionally with brilliance, and huge gusts of magical energy are pushed into this space to sustain the spell. All right, you pay the cost of the spell. Magic points, sanity, and any... There's no power for this one. However, those are all going to be multiplied by a D6. So, James, roll the D4 first for the sanity lost. Then we're going to roll a D6 to see how much all this multiplied. Note, Reverend, this is also going to apply to your magic point reduction. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. All right, Holy I will roll... Molly. Actually, Jack... Uh, no, I'm not going to put it on you. I will roll the D6. <laughs> no, I wouldn't trust my dice for anything. All right, this is what it's all being multiplied by. Uh, James, you've got your sanity. Uh, how much magic points did you put into this spell? Well, so I, I put into Martin personally or... Yeah, 16. Okay, oh, that is going to get multiplied gym. by this value. Any more that comes out of magic points is going to go into your health points. Okay? No. Yep. 
Okay. To be clear, you know what one times 16 is? What? Larger than my health. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Art, you put in four, right? Multiply that by three. Does any go into oh, your health? That's 12. That's yeah. the number I had. That's oh. my magic points is 12. So I am out of magic points, but I am untouched health-wise. That's so poetic. I love it. Okay. Um, you are... Pass it, Mr. Oceano, how, what's your hit points at the result of that? My hit points are 11. So I am banished, burnt right? and vaporized. If I can have a, if I can have a moment of, of, of brief description, I think I'm getting so, so excited, so into it. And then kind of, this is why I, I love magic and Call of Cthulhu because it's just so unpredictable, so unstable. You have this, she's, she's so wise. She's done so well. And then just, oh. One little misstep, one little, it's not that much. Eyes dart frantically, lock eyes with the Reverend for a second, look back towards the spreading portal and then maybe settle on the cross that has now been kicked out by the trudging feet and then explode in a massive prismatic oomph. In just a spray of blood and brilliant colours, uh, Miss Wentworth uh, erupts in this distant place and who knows to where her soul, if it is here, will depart. Uh, Miss Wentworth is dead. The spell has not succeeded. And the monsters on the edge, seeing this splatter, having seemingly be roused by the casting of the spell, by the thundering in this space, begin to creep down the edges towards you. Uh, what are you all doing? You know the alternative and what it was. Uh, Lord Northlake is looking down at the blood seeping from him. He's still holding the knife. Uh, and looks up to all of you. Uh, Mr. Hillier, next to you, Captain Stone, levels his shotgun out to some of the creatures and uh, says, we're only going to get one shot. We need to wait this count and begins to wait until they get close enough for him to fire. Uh, there are, there were five of you that came down. There are going to be six of these things that are making the approach. While I'm making things disastrous... Can I just also, is there any possibility that this shatters the, rem the slight remainder of the captain's sanity? Oh yeah, sorry, can I get sanity rolls from both of you? Oh, you see, you miss, miss when we explode. No, I'm not, I'm not. Okay, not <laughs> uh, each of you are gonna take a, uh, a D. God, I feel like it's gonna be a D8. It was a, this was not just a death, this was a, ah, oh, no, do, do it, do it, do a D6. Here we go. I'm getting the cool. Oh, Reverend. Reverend I cares Ken not for this. <laughs> I mean, I, I failed my sanity, so I do care. It's just uh, no no shock to anyone. The Reverend compartmentalizes quite well. You've also seen death before. I'm gonna I'm gonna ma I'm gonna adjust it minorly to a d6 plus one, having just checked the references. A d6 is a friend's violent death. This is a violent death with magic. So two points yep. for you and four points for Captain yeah. Stone. Um, the alcohol rules only apply if I only take a tickle. That's right. Otherwise, That's it's right. the full four. Captain Stone, is that enough Good. to send you over your indefinite? A hundo percento, All right. Dave. Uh, 29 out of 40. Dex, I don't think we need to roll to see what decision you make. If you want I'm it, it's there for the taking. Missed. I, th I think... Uh, I think I know what it is. <laughs> I think uh, I hear the butler say we've got one shot. We've got to make a count. Yeah. And I'd like to make my one shot count. Okay. And Where take you... Lord North Lake between the eyes. <laughs> Shit. And then get out of here. Okay. Without like, and the and the the insanity is like I don't even think about it. Yeah. Like the 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 conscious mind is gone. I don't consider it. I just go, well, that's the course of action that will allow us to win the battle. Yeah. So that's what must be done. Brutal. All right. Uh, the butler's next to you. Got his, his gun raised. And as you lay yours, you suddenly spin around, aim it right towards Lord Northlake, who has just enough time, his eyes bleary, still holding the knife, looks up to you and goes to raise his hands instinctively. Even he, once you get to the point of death, you do not want it. Puts his hands up, and you go, bam, fire. Uh, go ahead and make a firearms uh, rifle roll, can and... I, can I get myself to point blank rage first? 
Oh, you can, can you already are. I think, yeah, go ahead and go ahead and do it with a bonus dice, yeah. Oh, that's very kind. The training picks seen. in. <laughs> Not that I need that's, that's your sword, that's your sword, that's your sword. Oh, heck, can I keep the roll? Yep. Heck. Uh, hop. No. Heck. Got the bonus. 58 under 45. Do you have the luck to get that? I have five points of luck. Okay. You swing around in madness and fire at the reverend. Uh, rev uh, sorry, fire at the, uh, spilled by. Lord. Fire at the lord. It misses and slams into the obelisk, letting out a chip. And immediately, uh, the butler nearby, seeing you turn firing on his master, is going to go for your gun and try and drag you down to the ground. Uh, he is going, the other, the monsters are still closing in. He's going to make a brawl test against you. Captain Stone, would you like to dodge or repost? Uh, dodge. I have no quarrel with the butler. Okay. He dives onto you and tries to bring you to the ground, relieve you of your weapon. Uh, it has not gone through to the roll to the one. Oh, it's because oh. I'm still whispering. Hang on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, it, my it was go. a failure, though. Uh, I whispered it by accident because I still had it open. He will fail. Go ahead okay. and... You said dodge, right? You don't, oh, you I was don't, dodging anyway. You're, you're all good. That's fine. He yeah, leaps towards you. You're able ago. to sidestep him and dropping the rifle. If you wish, draw your saber and approach the altar. First, though, uh, Reverend Jennings, it is your turn. Well, um... You can probably see that uh, Captain is, you know, as we were all expecting. You can. Also, at some in... point, is beyond reason now. And also, in this instant, Lord North, like, although he previously, you got the, like, unspoken thing of if this goes poorly, he will sacrifice him. In this instant, in the throes of battle, he has put his hands up and is moving away from the captain. He does not, he, he, he terrors only, he's just seen Mr. Wentworth, Wentworth explode with ichor and he's walking away. His back is to you. Um... I... I'm honestly, I, I'm not a man, I don't take lives, that's not what I do. Uh, I usher them, but I am going to attempt to remind Lord his wife and child will not survive the night if he does oh. not do his duty in this moment. Yeah. And I'm going to try and essentially either, like, I don't necessarily want him to have to kill himself, but to, like, be like, you, this no, is it, man. Like, if you want to, if you, if you, if you live in this moment, you doom everyone. God sees you and you will go to, you will, you will go to his side and your, and your family will be safe. I am trying to steal him because if I could step into his place, I would in an instant. Yeah. But I can't. It, it's only him. So I am trying to, to stop, to make him realize and to get him to okay. like think of his family. Um, can you please, uh, so I'm going to ask you to make a uh, first, I'm going to make a roll first, then I'm going to ask you to make either a reassure or a persuade roll. You can check those. I am first going to make a sanity test for him to see if he is currently in a bout. He lost three points previously. He's on 57. He has failed that. He's going to lose a d6. Plus one. Is so he not a close friend? No, commit to it. There was a d6 plus one. And oh, on seven points, gone. he is currently mad. So you will it, now it is no longer a choice. It needs to be reassure because you need to bring him out of this bout. Here we go. Uh, do I? All right. Uh, for what's worth, he is in a bout of. Oh, oh an extreme. Do you, need, do you need an shit. extreme? I tell you I what, you an... I wouldn't hate it. <laughs> I wouldn't hate it. Because I think the hard will snap him out of it. The extreme will remind him of the stakes. You may have it. Five points of luck, you may have it. You have an extreme, sir. Hell yeah, Reverend. All right. I, I, like, I think there is, like, the Reverend turns, stares into, like, barks at, the, at Sir James, says, Man, remember your wife and child and your duty to your estate your manner, your people, and to God. And then goes back fully into Latin, but locks eyes with Sir James and is just like directly preaching to him to remind him, even though it is in Latin, it's like, it's the force of, of the oldest 
text I know. It is the force of, of everything that I can bring to bear in this moment. It is both reassuring but also demanding because it is God's will. And if there's one thing I do not question, it is God's will. Um, fuck yes. Uh, Lord Northlake snaps momentarily out of this debilitating madness, wraps his uh, hands around a knife, and says, at least no one else should die. Mr. Hillier, you'll escort the rest to the portal and make their way through the other side. You'll tell my wife and daughter that I love her and you'll care for them when I am gone. Reverend, fetch the captain. And then he's going to stand up and onto the altar and go to kill himself. Captain Stone, however, you are still within the bout and you are driven to kill this man. Reverend, you have taken your turn. Uh, the uh, Lord Nothing has been snapped out. He's going to do it on the next round. It returns to you, Captain Stone, as the monstrosities are beginning to set, uh, come down around you. They are closing the distance and are now level with the portal and approaching. Uh, Jackson, what would you like to do? All right. I mean, uh, I'd like to help the situation. If I get the sense that unfortunately uh, the you Lord's you are about you, to kill you are, himself, you are in a bout of madness. You generally like it's not like oh I'm he needs you are first. just like kill kill kill. The only thing happens is kill. He needs to be I need to bash his head on the rock until his skull split open and his Death. brains coat the altar. I roll to kill, kill kill. Okay, go ahead and make a fighting brawl roll. Oh brawl, sorry. Oh sorry no no no. Sword I sword's fine. Fast. Sword's fine. You sword's charge fine. fast. Sword's fine. Draw the sword and, and slice it out towards him. Uh, that's within your luckable range, right? Oh, uh, yes, I have five points of luck, James. That's very Although uh, you very don't have you. to spend them, and he is going to off himself, so. Uh, and he does succeed the dodge. So you slice out towards him, and he dances backwards. What this does, though, is you are continuing this assault, heading That's towards fine. him, and in Throes of Madness, you are not retreating. We go now hmm. to Reverend Jennings and Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier has gotten his orders. Even with that in mind, though, he is pausing for a moment. But his intention is going to be to head towards the portal shortly. He is, at, at the end of the day, a man of duty. Uh, Reverend, what would you like to do? The captain does not look to be retreating. And you are concerned yep. that by the time this is done, you've seen the madness in his eyes, even when Lord Northlake falls, the captain will continue. Like, probably long enough that the portal may be closed by then. Um, do I have time to attempt to bring him back from you do. whatever he's in? If you are willing to stay here for oh, another heck. round. I, I didn't roll for my uh, for the length of the. Oh yeah, go know. go ahead and roll. Oh uh, yeah, and can oh, you can you means... can you whisper it to me, Jackson? So can you Ooh. whisper GM the roll? I think it's slash W. Yeah, slash W space GM and then. Yeah, yeah that? I think that's it. Yep, I did. All right. And if you, otherwise, yeah. if you have a physical ro dice and just whisper it to me, up to you. No, I'm I think, it, great I think time. it's wonderful that. Regency, which is one of our, you know, which seems so exotic and kind of farcical, has ended. We, 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 this is one of our darker, um, pure yeah. horror ones. It's great. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. I oh, it's slash I... it's slash GM roll, Jackson. I found it. Sorry. Yeah. I'm having I, a great I, time I always just remember whispering to Dave. D10. <laughs> roll D10. Do slash do slash GM roll. One word. I'll do it. Um. I mean, I've, I like this. The captain has some pretty significant PTSD. I'm not even convinced I could bring him out of it with just like a reassure. Yep. I think I am going to. Uh, I am going to exit with the butler. I'm going to leave okay. because at this point, like, there is not much else I can do. The captain, being in like a rage, trying to kill everything. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I gotta, I gotta get, I, I also have a duty to get the butler out. Yeah. That man deserves yeah. to live and he is, yeah. I'm All gonna right. leave. You race past the captain and grab um, Helio by the arm and the two of you begin to sprint up. He's an older man. You're kind of assisting him slightly. As you rush towards the portal, you can see these things closing down the sides of the bowl and they don't lock ranks, but there's enough of them that they're going to be in between you and the portal. Can I get you to make a dexterity roll or a climb check as you ascend uh, the stairs? Actually, just straight decks is oh, fine. Nice. And I'm going to roll for the butler. You go rushing up oh, wow. and holding onto him, he begins to slip, scrambling, and is not making pace. You can continue to rush forward, or you can pause, help him up, and stay together. However, a round will be lost, and they will set upon you. 
Or they will be um, within range, at least. If I were to offer you an extreme on mine, can yeah. I pull him with me? Yes, you may, if you have Very any good. more luck to spend. Oh, my, my, my buddy, my fam. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you remember how I do my luck? All right, uh, I, if you still got it, go for it. So I need, I believe, if my math is correct, I need 19, 19 points, points of luck. Great, you may have 19. I am now on <clears throat> 30 luck. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my butler. stars, oh my word. The butler. Oh, for you, that's like nothing. Yeah. The, no! The butler okay. slips. <laughs> the butler slips and you're able to haul him up and back to his feet as you charge forward. As you near ranks with these monstrosities, you see that they aren't as focused on you as they are the scene underneath, and they scramble straight past down towards uh, the two figures on the altar. You get to the portal, and just as you turn to, to step back through it, you look back and see them all close in around it. You can go through the portal now. It is beginning to close. You have not seen exactly what has unfolded underneath. If if I get any intimation that the portal is closing, I am making an assumption that whatever is happening is at least doing something, so I'm going to go through uh, along with the, the butler. I will, okay. I will drag him behind me. I will go. I have, I have I done well in my dexterity. I'm going. You push him through first, and then stumble in after, and the portal begins to close behind you. Meanwhile... At the end of all of these the things, Captain Stone, you shoulder off the butler, step forward, the Reverend goes past you, but you see none of this. Lord Northlake steps up onto the altar and goes to lay the knife along his wrist, killing himself and closing the portal. But you do not allow him even the dignity of some serene death. And you lay upon him with your saber, cutting him to pieces like the monsters all around you. As he falls, you lay slice and slice again into his body until he tumbles down onto the altar, his blood seeping into the stones. It's unfortunate that your sanity just begins to return to you as the six of these foul creatures surround you and with the stains of one fair lord on your the stains of blood on your oh, hands no. and around your saber as you see the ichor of uh miss georgiana spread all around you these things will devour you piece by piece pulling your armor apart your your uh, ripping the the belts from you and dropping your rifle to the ground they will eat your stomach first they will draw your intestines into their own small mouths where they will lick and twist them until they are some image of the cherubic faces they share as well your ribs will be splayed open and through all of this you will live your mind will be broken, but ultimately you will stand again, join ranks with theirs, and perhaps in a hundred years, we will meet Captain Stone again, but he will not be on our side, and this time he will be the monster hunting the fair people of the Northlake estate. Do you have any wait. final words, Captain Stone? Anything that goes through your mind? At, at least it wasn't Napoleon. <laughs> at least it wasn't Napoleon. Captain Stone falls. The only survivor of this last voyage into the Dark Realm is Reverend Jennings, who emerges out into the other side, where he finds a curious space. The party is over, and silence fills the North Lake Manor. The corridor, by the time you emerge, is perfectly mundane. It is some few short yards long, and there is no rip behind you. The butler, standing next to you, has no physical damage to him, although you yourself are splattered with the remains of Miss Wentworth. Turning backwards, perhaps in some faint hope you would see either of the others coming through, you see just a mundane. There's still the barricades in place, but there's no more evidence of what happened. 
so you know there's a monster in it. We're going to widen this way, way out. And I want to know what the Reverend does. Lord Northlake has not returned. Oh. Um, when you say what the Reverend does, do you mean in the immediate or in the general? Mm, the immediate, then the general, I suppose. How do you how do you resolve this night? And uh, th this night, principally, we will then do a short time skip. But that's been preference for the next scenario. So just worry about the you know this night and the day that follows that kind of thing. This night, he. He attends to the family. Um, he... I mean, cleans himself before he does so, but attends to the family and relays the bravery of Sir James and the the sacrifice that he made to keep his family safe. The, the, the acknowledgement of grief at the loss of a family member that, that cannot be it will never leave cannot be overcome but but can be learned to to live with uh over time he provides whatever solace and words of comfort he can to the family but uh, you know and i think then will also go and attend Miss Emma because he also knows he has news to share there as well um, and provides whatever, again, comfort and words of, of solace he can um, not entirely being sure that she is awake and conscious enough to hear them but know your sister was an incredible young young woman and she made an amazing sacrifice that will be remembered by everyone well by myself and by this family and by god forever um As to what he does the day following, I think he spends a lot of time in contemplation. And I think there is something in the back of his mind. When his sister died, there was nothing he could do. It was it was disease that took her. It was there was no recourse. He's he's not a man of medicine, so he can't he, he does not know anything else he could have done. But Miss Wentworth, well, ritual is something he understands, and he truly believes that were he to have a better understanding of, of the rituals that are at play, perhaps this would not have had to have been, perhaps this would not have gone the way it had gone, perhaps there was something more he could have done. Um, and I think there's a, there's a, maybe not immediately, but over the days and, and perhaps weeks, perhaps months to follow, there begins to be a real drive and a push towards if monsters can manipulate such rituals for their gain, then so too must it be possible to use rituals to bring the light of God and to, to combat such things. That is, that is where his mind goes. Um, Obviously, Alex isn't here, and we don't know what happens to Emma, but I suspect uh, they keep in contact mm -hmm. at a minimum. We'll be seeing more of these two. Without <laughs> <laughs> the others. Amazing. Um, with... if, if Yeah, I will have a chat to Alex about this, but I suspect uh, with both of them having lost a sister, at minimum, they potentially stay quite close companions. Yeah. Um, 100%. Um, you are also, Reverend Jennings, one of the few people aware of the fact that in a hundred years, in 1913, this gate will open again. We're not able to close it permanently. And when Hopefully it nothing does... nothing else is going on at that time. 
Yeah, nothing that could threat threaten the children of a of a major family. <laughs> the bloodline of the North Lakes will need to be sacrificed, or else it will continue to open. Those things will flood out the world, and that information needs to get to the people that will be able to action it. Um, well, that's kind of why I'm starting to research rituals, because I feel like maybe that's a me thing, or at least a, like, I need to put this down so that someone finds it and is able to do it later, or etc. Yeah, so. Amazing. Someone um, needs to know and they need to they need to be able to succeed where we failed. Um, uh, the last the last role I'm going to ask you to make in true Regency fashion is be reputation. See how you come out of this. I'm going to note this is going to ex this is going to scale. On a failure, you are going to lose reputation, or basically being somehow involved in the death of Lord Nothic. On a success, you're just going to maintain the same. And on a hard and further, you may actually come out of this looking quite thick. Here we go. Oh no! Oh my! <laughs> oh the luck! I think you are. Do you have it? 41 points, I think. No, not. I don't think you do. Got 30. Uh, uh, with I mean, I could push it, but man, it's, it's... It, is, it, is, it is not immediately apparent what happened that day. And although Elizabeth is aware of something, there is a... Their father died, as well as the death of Miss Wentworth and Captain Stone. And you will... The rumours will spread that the strange reverend... You know, it, it begins to twist a little out of your favour. Uh, can you please lose a D6 reputation? Mm -hmm. Remember, if you get too high, you'll get kicked out of the North Lake party. <laughs> well, oh, that's, that's not too bad. I that's think not I too ended bad. Up exactly where I started this scenario. And we're neutral. It's a kind of a like <laughs> you're a bit of a strange reverend. They, I no mean, one's. I still have. I have above fifty still. Yeah. I'm still like just. I'm a bit weird, but fine. One hundred percent. It's just the rumors of like oddness that begin to follow you. All right. Um, with that, and with the. One way or the other, the entrance to the dark dimension, whatever the hell it's called, uh, closed. Uh, that is where we are going to park this scenario. Mm. The long corridor. Oh, it's it's a back long now. corridor. Yeah, it's, it's just, now it's just, just a, a corridor. A corridor. Um, yeah. uh, we're going to park it there and uh, fret not though, uh, we will return to, to Regency Cthulhu and some of these characters uh, <laughs> as we uh, uh, jump forward a few years and pick back up with uh, another scenario from this cracking tome. Uh, so join us next week uh, as we resume and we'll need to do a little scramble in the in-between to figure out who the hell some of us are playing <laughs> 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 and what actions the uh, surviving in, uh, PCs will have taken. Um, yeah, wow. I think that's all. Uh, thank you all for tuning in and watching with us. Thank you to uh, my players for playing. And, um, thank you, Dave. Thank, thank you. Thank you, chat, for yeah, hell yeah. coming with us on whatever Fine. this was. This is was wild. That was a wild one. Well done. Convention is closed. We will see you all very soon. Ciao.